There you go. Feeder, just the way I'm feeling. XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. We've got a great show lined up this week, haven't we? Go on. What have you got planned? Uh, well, I've got songs from David Bowie, Thin Lizzy, Gene, AC, DC, you heard Feeder there, you got, oh, oh, Smiths, mm. all mm. that. We've mm. got a great feature, a new feature. Um, spoke to Carl in the week, and we worked out a new feature where, um, people are gonna give him sort of, like, problems to solve. There could be scenarios, there could be management scenarios at work, you know, problem solving, things like that, organising things. He's a very good organiser, so I'll tell you what, tell you what happened. He's dropping Do We Need Him, cos he's getting fed up with scientists. He thinks there's a conspiracy and they're getting together and they're never gonna lose an animal. <laughs> right. So he's just fed up with that. Uh, Rockbusters, we've got some great prizes. Uh. Well, have you seen them yet? No. Nah. Be careful. They're not going to be great. I are just they? peeked in, and all I'm going to say to you is Fools and Horses Christmas special. <laughs> not the little one with the little car. With the little one. car, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. That is excellent. Carl, what have you got to say for yourself? Hold on, it was a rollover, wasn't it? Because you really mucked up yeah. Rockbusters last time. What is he doing? It's saying FP for the whole thing. No, FD, you were saying, and it was free to pain. Have you written the clues down this week? Because that seems like an obvious I've, way I've, to improve I've, this. Yeah, I'll write the clues down. The week down. before he couldn't remember what the answer was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but. You know, you learn by your mistakes and that. Mm. You don't. <laughs> well. So, so, yeah. so I'll give you a little taster. Of, we were mm. having a, a pizza in a, in a pizza establishment. Uh, when was it? Wednesday or Thursday? Yeah. And uh, he was going, I'm a good uh, organiser, I'm a good problem solver. Give me any, any scenario, right? Obviously he didn't say scenario. Um, and I went, okay then, so uh, you're the manager of this place and there's a couple there, elderly couple, they're about 60. They've had a lovely meal. He went, yeah, right. I went, but the, the gentleman, he's got a little bit of a heart condition, he takes a pill after his meal, as he should, after meals. <gasps> he's only taken Viagra. Oh. And now he's stuck in. Wedged in? Wedged in. We've it's gone. It's gone and it's stopping him getting out from the table. Yeah. I said, what would you do? He went, what? He's stuck in because of his dick. I went, yeah. He went, right. He said, I'd use the situation. I'd make cash. I said, you're not going anywhere. Do you want a pudding? <laughs> <laughs> Entrepreneurial. <laughs> yeah. I like it, Carl. Anyway, oh. so that's that sorted. I've got the job on that. Next, I went, okay. Another, oh, you won't believe it. Next day, there's a little problem in the toilets. Two, two gay men were having sex and they got stuck in, in each, each other. other. Yeah, yeah. He went, right. I'd say, is it the same fella yeah, as yesterday with Viagra? If so, why was he let in again? He was on the door. <laughs> yeah. I went, it's not. It's two yeah. He goes, right. Does his wife know he's cheating on <laughs> Yeah. He went, right, I'd go down. I, I'd go, and then he went, Oh, I'd say this isn't a restaurant problem, call an ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> Strictly speaking, not a restaurant problem, no. <laughs> but I'm uh, all right. Huh? Am I right? Well, I don't know. Would you give me the job if, if say, like you were the boss of that restaurant and you? Uh, do you know what I like about this? At no point did he say, Jabez, why are you being so mental? Yeah, yeah. Why would someone get stuck because they took Viagra by mistake and two people get stuck in each but other? But you've heard the stories from his past. <laughs> that is a perfectly legitimate situation <laughs> yeah, to find yourself yeah. in. If you grew yeah. up in his part of What Manchester? would you do if there was two fellows with big heads and webbed feet and they had a horse in a? Well, what I do is, what would you do? What did you do when you when you first saw him? What, saw the, uh, the, the lads with the big heads and Yeah, that. yeah. Um, I We should very quickly remind people if they didn't listen to that particular show. Um, they were, they had webbed hands. Yeah. Did they or webbed feet? Well, they had, they had webbed hands. Right. And big and heads. And enormous heads. But it wasn't related. But they weren't related to I know, to they were completely no, 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 separate no, but people. I'm saying that the webbed hands isn't due to the fact they've got a big head. No, sure. It's two different things. We're just unlucky. Yeah. No, hold on. If they weren't related th and they both had webbed hands and big heads, I'm saying there was a condition that had, that no. was related that had those two con I don't think it was. So what do you think the chances of that are? They're not related and he goes, oh, you've got a big head and webbed hands as well. Yeah, just a coincidence, isn't it? Yeah, I, d I honestly don't think it was related. Right. Because I've I've seen I've I've since seen the the same problem again on another kid with a big head. His hands look good. Right. So the, do you think the big head is just a separate issue? Yeah, it's a totally different illness. It's right. like having a headache and a cold at the same time. Right. So not always connected. But the weird thing is, right, looking looking around in the week at weird stuff on the uh, on the internet. Yeah. There was this woman who's got a big head. Oh yeah. And. Um, she was fed up with it because when she was walking down the street, it was so big, she couldn't hold it up. Right. Right? She couldn't hold it up. Oh, God. Oh, God. Sorry. Okay, keep, shut up. So, she when, she, hold up. when she was walking, she, her eyes were hurting because she had to sort of look up all the time because her head was that heavy, her chin was sort of balanced on her chest. Right. right? And she'd have to peek up, yeah. So, uh, she goes to the doctors, and this was after years and years, and, uh, said, you know, I thought I could put up with it, but I can't. It's, it's sure. How big eyes. was her head? It's big, I, it, I don't know if it was, like, big, because there wasn't a picture. I don't know if it was just big or a lot of bone. 
So it was heavy. <laughs> heavy. Right, like the elephant man, just so, outcrops. Yeah, right. So, yeah. uh, so the doctor said, yeah, um, we can sort that out. Mm -hmm. Um, but we'll have to take your head off. Right. Okay, no, okay, well, listen, listen keep going. Okay, listen, keep going. Because yeah. I, again, I, what you don't seem to understand is I, I have the same reaction to you when I see it. Yeah. Right? What? You're quizzical yourself. So, I looked at it, they took her head off, um, chipped away a bit of the bone, mm -hmm. made her head lighter, put it back on. <laughs> Right, play the Smith. He took a woman's head off. Yeah, this is ours, play the Smith. And if you'd like to ask Carl something, details coming up soon. How's that? Nice ask by the Smiths on XFM 104.9. So, uh, What's the email, Carl? If people want to ask you something, a problem, they've got a problem to solve. It can be anything. It could be a personal problem, it could be a scenario. It could be about, uh, it could be about war. It can be anything. But it or it could be more flippant, I suppose, and like Yeah, yeah it could be. Yeah, but I prefer stuff that I could see. So you can get your teeth into. And, and, and actually, you know, sort out. What, war, like war? War is too, it's a bit, bit big for me, that one. Do you think? I don't want to get into that. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? If Tony Blair came to you and he went, Carl, listen, I'm having a bit of trouble here. I, I don't know what to do. I've tried everything. I've tried spin. I've tried being tough. I've tried backing down. I've tried getting other countries involved. They don't want to know. What do I do? What do I do? Uh, you don't know. Tricky one. I don't it's get, a tricky I don't one. It's a tricky one. Yeah. I don't worry about it. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just get in the bath. Put a mattress on the on top of you. That's it. Sorry, wh why are you doing <laughs> Ooh, that? Ooh, slow down. Why are you doing that? That's what they say you do, isn't it? If it kicks off. If what uh, kicks off? If, if, there's, if there's a war and that, you, you get in the bath, put a mattress on top. Right. Did they do that in the Second World War for six years? Was that make, making bunk beds? That's just what I read somewhere. Yeah. You get, is the bath full of water? Uh, no, no. No, no, no. No. That'd be daft. Okay. Yeah, I think that I it. think they're an enamel bath then, though. I think they'd stop a bit of shrapnel. I think the plastic ones you get nowadays would probably melt on you. And the mattress where your dad has cut it in half, all the foam would come out and the springs would get you in the eye. Oh, talking about me dad. Steve, you'll love this, right? Go on. Um, my dad hates, uh, he hates being ripped off, right? Yes. Well, no, I can relate to that. That's important. Um, hates coming to London now. He always wants me to go and see them rather than come here because he just thinks London is like a big rip off. Mm. Uh, last time he came he got annoyed because I bought him a scone and a cup of tea for like three of us and it was fourteen pounds and he just yeah. was livid. And then uh, we had an argument about that and then <coughs> we went to the Millennium Wheel and I said, do you fancy going on this? He said, oh, all right. And then he saw the price and it was something like twenty quid or something. And he said, twenty quid to go up in the air to look at stuff that's on the ground. He said, I might as well stay on the ground. Brilliant. Right? Thought, good point. His logic is impeccable. So anyway, this is going on. Anyway, he spoke to me the other day, I said, how are things? Are they alright? And that. He said, oh, being ripped off. I said, why? He said he ordered, do you know the place where he got a new bed from because he cut the other one of course, in half, yeah. right? He, uh, he got this bed out of a catalogue. So, uh, so he sorted out a payment on the phone. He said, look, you're ripping me off a bit here on the interest thing, but, um, well, let's do a deal. We'll sort out a new monthly payment. That's different to the, what it says in the catalogue. And he said, yeah, we'll go along with that. Anyway, so he sorted that out, he was happy, the bed arrived, it's a nice bed, he said, that's great. So anyway, uh, he got the bill for it, and it was the original price. Oh, I thought it might be the case, yeah. Right. So he called up and said, I'm not happy with this. He said, we, we said a deal, and I'm like, oh, no, I don't know what you're talking about. He said, right, don't send me your catalogues anymore. He said, I'm not, I'm not buying anything from you, you're a rip-off merchant. Uh -huh. Right. Um, so anyway, a few, few weeks go by. Post comes, only another catalogue oh, in the post. He's livid. Right, so he was well annoyed. Yeah. So he looked on the back, and it said on it, "This catalogue will always be property of you know the company that that does it." Um, if w so, you can't throw it away. If if we request to have it back, we've got the permission to to get it back off you. Right. right? So he thought, right, well they're out of order. I told them not to send me one, and they have done, and they're saying I can't chuck it away. So he called them up. And said, uh, all right, Mr. Pilkington here, bought a bed off you, you conned me and that. <laughs> but, you know, forget that. We've, yeah. we've dealt with that. You've sent me a catalogue, I told you not to. It says on the back here that this will always be yours. Yeah? So, in a way, you're using my house as a warehouse. I'll be charging you 26 pence or something uh, a day. Brilliant. 
He said, you already owe me £6.28. <laughs> Something like that. Genius. And, uh, yeah, he sorted it out. So again, you know, it's- it just So hang on, but are they going along with this? I don't know what happened. He said they sounded annoyed and said they'd get back to him and they haven't, but he said, I'm not bothered. They can take as long as they want because the money just keeps going up. Yeah. 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 So, what sort of profit has he made so far? Well, when I spoke to him in the week, it was like six pound odd. Yeah. That was, I think that was on Tuesday. So, so he's, 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 you know, he's just leaving. It's like laughing. an investment. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's like an antique he's bought. Just, yeah. Yeah. It's just going up every day, so, uh. Well, keep us posted on that. That's yeah, dynamite. I, I, one day we need to speak to your father. Yeah, I think so. So many questions I need think to be do. asked of him. But I might sit and give you a letter to take home. <laughs> yeah. Dear Mr. Pilkington. <laughs> your son, Carl. <laughs> New single from, uh, Nick Cave. I think I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. That's okay. the uh, forthcoming single from Nick Cave from his album Nocturama. That's called Bring It On. That's great. I, I must admit, I was a latecomer to Nick Cave. He's I was, extraordinary, uh, yeah. I, I mean, years into his solo stuff before, you know, I decided that he was brilliant. Mm, yeah. He's fantastic. No, he's, he's fantastic. Um, I had some exciting news this week, Carl. You'll be pleased yeah. to find out. Um, I, I, I'm worried that you might get a little bit jealous because it's obviously going to impact on your world quite strongly. Because I know you think you'd like things to be quite, the, quite sa you know, samey. You'd like the status quo to be maintained. You like the fact that in the past, you know, we've had some crosswords. You know, because you've, I remember, what did you think of me when I first walked in? When I first came in on the yeah, first day of I don't XFM? know why you're making a big deal. Do you want to bring it? Do you want to mention? I'm just being honest, honest though. I'm just well, being honest about a lot of people who see you for the first time sort of go, well, he's a bit weird. <laughs> Ooh, ooh, I know ooh. that, Steve, that you brought it up, and then you're again. But I'm you're sure that wasn't what he said before. No, did he, he didn't. say before? I, yeah, he, well, well, he's I, a bit weird. Yeah, well, I, he looked at you, and uh, I knew I could see by the look on his face. You know when uh, when you know you, your kid, and your kid's sort of scared of something, and they go, "Why does your kid?" He goes, "Oh, he doesn't like pigeons or spiders." Right. It was like that when I saw Carl, and I brought you in, and I went, "What do you think of that, Carl?" I could see the look on his face that he d he was disturbed. Sure. And then, as he said. You get used to it, don't you? Yeah, you get used to it. And you, and you have changed a little bit. Your hair's a bit smarter now and you've got some nicer glasses and that, I think. <laughs> or I might have just got used to it. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Don't bring it up, Steve. Don't well, look at me like that. So you say that you think some other people in the office thought the same? Do you know that for sure? Carl. Did you discuss it? Carl. Yeah, I think, I think they do, yeah. Okay, leave it there then. But not just in the office. As you walk through <laughs> the building. <laughs> It's worse than you ever thought. Well, no, it's not worse than I ever thought because, as you well know, Ricky Gervais. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what did I do on uh, Thursday morning? Oh, is this the thing? Uh, for those uh, that perhaps are, are not of the female persuasion listening, there's a magazine. Apparently, it sells quite well. It's one of the sort of female, you know, kind of uh, issues magazines. I think it's called Company Magazine. You know, it's like your sort of. I guess it's a bit like your Moore or your Vanity Fair or yeah. whatever. Anyway, they run every year the 50 most eligible bachelors in Great Britain section. Ding dong, hello. Who's in there this year? In the, in the 50, in the top 50 of the entire country. And then they vote, they vote and they put them in order and see who's the most eligible bachelor. But that's, of, that's 50 people, right? Most, I mean, the, I, it always annoys me slightly because bachelor, it, it, it kind of seems like a more sophisticated word for loser. Yeah, it? No. Which always sort of unnerves And also they try and do a different 50 every year, so they're but getting pretty desperate to get different ones. No, you know, no, it's not no, really, no, 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 Cause no, also no. a lot of people who are sort of like successful, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, are married, so there's very little to- No, no, go no, on, no, 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 there's a huge, no, there's a huge, I don't know if this is international, it could even be international, I'm sure. not sure actually. So sure. I could be up there with the likes of Justin Timberlake, sure. etc. So uh, Fred Durst. Yeah. That sort of person, you know. So anyway, l l this is what's exciting, right? Although I'm slightly frustrated because they were telling me that last year, all right, uh, they get, cause what happens is the, your, the readers of the magazine, they vote for who they think is number one most eligible bachelor, right? Last year, the, uh, the prize was a two week trip in the Bahamas, okay? This year, I'm rather annoyed because all I'm gonna win is a moped. That's whoa, the prize this year, that's whoa, the prize this year, a moped. Whoa, whoa, oh, oh, backtrack. What? Sorry? Last year, was a two week trip to Bahamas and this year Just what? a moped, I'm all, all I'm gonna get is all a moped. All you're gonna win is a moped. Yeah, I'm you're so- not, You've uh, got no chance. You're you've got enough. no chance. Who else is in it? Who else is in it? Well, I mean, I don't know lots and lots of people you've never heard of. There was, I know Duncan from Blue. Ding! Isn't so, no. it, so you're second to him at least no. already. I imagine you're, you're gonna come behind the other 49. No, 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 so, uh, no, no, but, 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 because you know, there'll be people voting for me. They yeah, get to vote for me. Yeah, Steve. They'll see, my, they'll see my photo and they can vote for me. Yeah, according to he, I was 22nd most sexy man in the world. I better take that helmet back. I was.
ACDC. Brilliant. You shook me all night long on XFM 104.9. Well, this show is a rockin'. It is. It is Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. I came up with a new, uh, um, strand for Carl as well. He likes- he's always got- you know, we've done- uh, I don't think there's a week gone where we haven't mentioned an airy kid. A hairy right? child, yeah, you're on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, some related to a monkey and that. And I thought you could do a regular thing where he's got to come up with a story about a- an ape or a, a, a monkey. And it's called Chimpanzee That. <laughs> of course. Of I course. Have, I have got one, but I can't remember it at the moment, so I'll just have to It'll come to you whenever you've joined yeah. the show. Well, listen, while you're thinking about that, while you're stewing on that, here's a, a problem that someone's emailed in. Mm -hmm. We're taking, uh, emails today. If you've got a problem, a concern, um, or, you know, just a general query that you think Carl could answer for you. It could be about anything. It could be about some of the big kind of philosophical questions. Yeah. Um, it could be uh, you know, something to do with war or famine, anything like that. Or it could just be a personal dilemma, you know, something that's happening locally. Anyway, this seems one that I think you probably have, you and your father have probably come across this sort of dilemma in the past. Yeah. And I'd be interested to know what your take is on it. Uh, let me see, this is from Lee Matthews by the look of it. He says, he lives in a suburban area where the local teenagers uh, also live on the same road and they're running riot. They're smashing wing mirrors off the cars, they're crashing into park cars on their skateboards and they're just generally making hay mayhem, you know, night and day. Uh, what can he do to stop this going on? Uh, the parents of the kids don't seem to give a damn. Anyone who complains to them, they just say, I'll oh, piss off. You know, the police are useless because they never catch them in the actual act of violence, which is what they got to do to, uh, apparently convict them. So uh, they, they don't know who to turn to, really. It's rather like when a little old lady went and got the eighteen, you know. The it's a, it's show. a, you know, and he was dressed as an elderly Chinaman. Exactly. She knew, she knew who he was. Colonel Decker didn't have a clue. Yeah. You see, it's weird because now, now it has got out of hand. Do sure. you know what I mean? Like years ago when I was growing up on the estate, um, yeah, you had problems, but not like you have now. Do you no. know what I mean? Mm. Um, you know, the summers were nicer as well, weren't they? Well, <laughs> it did seem that way, didn't it? Yeah. Right, and Police are getting shorter, aren't you? But you yourself kind of admitted in the past that you were something of a tearaway. Didn't, you didn't do anything yeah, like never, these kids I here. Mean, the but thing is, I was I was scared that if I got caught doing it, my dad would go mad. Yes. And I remember smashing a car window by accident and legging it in the lounge and sort of pretending to go asleep on the settee. Right? <laughs> Genius. And I heard a knock at the door. He chloroformed himself <laughs> just to be unconscious when his dad came home. And there was a knock on the door. And I thought, oh god, this is a fella who saw me. I was chucking a stone in the air, seeing how high I could throw it. <laughs> of course and you were. It came Did it keep landing on your head? <laughs> <laughs> that would explain a lot. And, uh, it, it came down. Chucking a, a stone in the air, love it! <laughs> see how far I could throw brilliant. it. brilliant. So, you know, uh, I wasn't bothering anyone. Did you invent that, that game? Right. Did so you anyway. get the stone for your birthday? <laughs> <laughs> go and play with your stone. He gave one to Suzanne. <laughs> Carl, go and play with your stone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, the thing is, right, and it came down at a fun, funny angle, and it ate, of course it, did. it ate the back of this uh, car, and the, and the back window is the most expensive because it has that heating thing in it. Yeah. In case mm -hmm. you got a frosty window. Yeah. So I thought, oh god. <laughs> so I legged it in, got on the settee, went to sleep, knocked at the door. <laughs> Genius. It's <laughs> a brilliant <laughs> plan. It's a brilliant <laughs> plan. <laughs> I couldn't be guilty. I'm asleep. So, so I love the idea. So uh, the thing is, our lounge used to sort of you could you could see in from the door, right? So this family who uh, <laughs> I saw me do it let, saw me asleep on the settee, and my mum said, "Go and get the door." And I sort of went oh, as if I'd been asleep. Yeah. I went to the door like rubbing my eyes, and uh, the fella said, "What did you run off for? I saw you." I was like, "Oh no," and. I didn't see me dad, I went out, it was when he was working sort of evenings, so I went out so I didn't have to see me dad. And then the next day I came, fr I came home from school and my dad said, 45 quid. Oof. That's all he said That's when he, he looked at me. And then you fell asleep when he went, wake up, wake up, you know what I said, <laughs> no, yeah. 45 quid, no, the thing Carl, was, he, right. he, he didn't have to do 45 anything. pounds, Carl, now I know you were saving up for a brick, <laughs> but you can't have it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But do you know what I mean? It's like, I knew I did wrong. Uh, and I was scared that my dad was going to belt me. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, oh, you know, I'll be more careful next time. But that was that. clearly good parenting on the part of your father, because these young tykes, that, clearly they don't have the, uh, what the, do you the, do? the father's support. I don't do even, I, I don't know if, if I you were living help. in that street, very quickly, what would you do? What, what, would, what would your approach be? If you were living in his street? What if, what if they'd come over and they'd, they'd just vandalised all your pebbles, right, yeah. that you've been saving over the years and just threw mm. your gravel away? What would yeah. you do if they just... I'd probably clout one of them. So you'd use violence? 
I think it's the only way sometimes. Sometimes it's <laughs> the only way. <laughs> and I don't, I don't mean, you know, really bad, but I'd, I'd show them that I'm not putting up with this. Right. And th then the problem is you've got their family coming round and they're probably quite Go to sleep. Yeah. If you hit a kid and the dad comes down, just go to yeah. sleep. Yeah. yeah. Just <laughs> think. So, yeah, um, equally, if you're doing a bigger crime, you know, like yeah. a bank job yeah. or a murder. Remember to take the stocking off your head, because they yeah. wake you up and go, why have you got a stocking on your head? Yeah. Just go, oh, I had a weird dream. It well, won't work. It's like with, with our kid, right, he was, um, I told Ricky about this the other day in the, uh, in the pub, but. He's Is this your brother? He, he never, yeah. Because he, he was a terror, be, wasn't he? Well, yeah, a little bit, but it he was He did more drive a tank down the, the high street once, didn't he? Yeah, that's when he was in the army. <laughs> yeah. But, but, uh, Another story. But, but this time, I remember, um, <laughs> my mum and dad were going out, right, for the evening. And, um, I must have been about, I don't know, five, so our mark was like, I don't know, s probably eighteen, yeah. something like that, seventeen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So, my mum and dad go out, and our mark says to me, right, uh, Here's a deal. Do your little deal. I'm gonna have a load of, uh, women round. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, deal is, I'll let you have your tractor in the house. Wow. Right. He had a tank, you had a tractor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, yeah, but his brother didn't have the rocks that Carl had. No, no. So he needed the so tractor to put on, his what toys along. What kind of a man was he? He brought a bunch of women round. So, yeah, there's loads of- but do you know when you're a kid, you don't think, ooh, I know what they're up to. You're not bothered, are you? Do you know what I mean? You, as long as I've got my tractor, I'm happy. Yeah. So I was, I was- <laughs> <laughs> He actually hasn't changed a bit. But how many women did he have? Was it just him and like a bunch of women? Yeah. Was it like, what, what's his name? What's his name? Like Nedwell from Confessions? Yeah, yeah, Confessions yeah. of an older well, brother. Just came around the he, he liked orders. his women. He li oh, seriously, right? My mum and dad had to move because they got sick of women coming round saying, I've got a kid and it's your marks. They had to move because it got that bad. <laughs> You know, did you hear, when you were playing on your tractor and there was women running back and forth in underwear, did you ever hear this noise? <laughs> <laughs> did yeah. you ever hear that? Or <laughs> kind of <laughs> And just see <laughs> your brother's <laughs> arse disappearing down yeah, the exactly. thing being chased by a butcher. Did you ever- It's, <laughs> it's not important, is it? <laughs> <laughs> is that what it's gonna be like, do you think, when I'm voted number one most eligible bachelor in Great Britain? <laughs> yeah, if you're coming on your moped. <laughs> I mean, no, like, am I gonna get a tractor? <laughs> <laughs> Cheering brakes, painkiller. Open brackets, uh -huh. summer rain, close brackets. On XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Rockbusters? Is it that time? It is yeah. indeed. Last week, of course, it was a disaster. Yeah, every, every Saturday at 16 minutes to two, we do <laughs> Rockbusters! <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I have to say that by, I've not really gone through them, but the prices look exactly the same as they were last week. Yeah. There's that t-shirt. So it's a rollover, still... but you haven't added to it. Have you not the point of a rollover is you've got to add to it. That's the excitement. Yeah, not there's, a, there's a couple of albums that. Were okay, in well, it's okay. also the uh, Fools and Horses um, video with oh, the, the free. I don't think I'm bloody jealous of that. <laughs> I like that <laughs> oh, no. little yellow thing. It's a little. Uh, there's a little kind of um, model oh, three-wheeled van. Rodney, you plonker. Oh, <laughs> dude. What's that? Uh, this is what looks to be some kind of best of of the stereo MCs. Don't call me a plonker, you. Oh, wank up. The David Attenborough <laughs> DVD collection. Oh, the unk shit himself again. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the big prize that we <laughs> tried to give away. Cassandra! Who is that supposed to be an impression of? Which <laughs> member of the cast is that? <laughs> oh. Is that Cheeky Dell? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Best chill out album ever, the best Brilliant. guitar volume two, Brilliant. and of course for all our fans, Doctor Who, The Aztecs. That's on DVD and that's uh, one of the William Hartnell <laughs> Doctor Who. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <that's fun>. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. <laughs> that's the worst impression I've ever heard. <laughs> that's brilliant. <laughs> Cryptic <laughs> stuff. <laughs> oh, come on. Right. Three. I, I can't do it. No, come on! Right, three, <laughs> three uh, cryptic um, clues. <laughs> Some of which may be wrong. <laughs> yeah, and uh, don't take the letters literally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, go on. And, and some initials, and it makes up of a uh, makes up a band. So um, <laughs> here we go then. Uh, there's three of them. You email in Ricky at uk. Yeah. Right, here we go then. Yep. Uh, number one. Uh, <laughs> the weather stinks, doesn't it? <laughs> 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 
The weather stinks, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's R. That's R. Right. The weather stinks, doesn't it? Yeah. Second one. Um, look, Gran, just get on the boat and help us out. <laughs> Alright, give us that again. Look, Gran, just get on the boat and help us out. Look, mm. Gran, just get on the boat and help us out. What's yeah. the initial? R again. R again, interesting. Yeah. And then the third one, uh, <laughs> if you're gonna do that with your drink, I'd let it settle for a bit before you open it. CK. CK. Alright, so- What's more? So quickly, all the way through then. Number one, uh, the weather stinks, doesn't it? <laughs> That's R. Uh, look, Gran, just get on the boat and help us out, will you? That's R as well. And then the last one, if you're gonna do that to your drink, I'd let it settle for a bit before you open it. C-K. Ricky.Gervais at xfm.co.uk. Brilliant. Fantastic. Right, we'll have a bit of vinyl. Let's have a classic, let's have a classic from right. the, uh, the Merchant Collection. <laughs> That's going to be the new single from Eminem. Sing for the moment. I like that. It's not bad, XFM, 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Alright, Carl? Alright. <laughs> <laughs> what's the matter? Huh? Just, um, you know what's the matter. What? Should I explain? I, if you want. I'm sort of an independent adjudicator and I couldn't help but notice that you both went out to make the teas, <laughs> but only one of you came back with a wig made out of that <laughs> poppy stuff that you pack. Bubble wrap. Bubble wrap, yeah. That you and he didn't want me to do it with sellotape, so I kind of did it with elastic bands that I found. That's it, nice apparently it hurt his ear, it's cut into his head, uh, and, and, uh, <laughs> and look at him, he's annoyed. I don't know. Uh, There's not many, uh, many times I've ever done, you know, any form of work, really, where halfway through it, you know, let's say a two-hour live radio show, one of the people has said to the other, can I make, out of this big cardboard box, a bishop's hat for you? Well, I did that, and I the- I start fashioning uh, that. And, well, yeah, but, and the senator the hurt his eyebrows, so when we went to the kitchen, I kind of did it with elastic bands, and that, that was cutting into his ear or something, I don't know, making excuses. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Carl, you are here for Ricky Gervais's amusement. Hmm. I think, oh, if you check the small print of your contract, have you got I mean, have you got anything interesting about a monkey or a, an ape so we can do chimpanzee that? I know something that a lot of other people will know, but I'll I'll Well, well let's do it then. Chimpanz chin what's it called again? Where should we do a jingle? Well <laughs> do a little jingle for us then. <laughs> oh chimpanzee that <laughs> Brilliant. That's great. Right. So I look forward to that every week. Yeah. Um, and uh, what's your interesting chimp fact? fact? Right. It's about um this monkey ages ago. <laughs> of course. Uh, don't know where it happened. 17th century? I think it was a chimp. Right. right. Uh, <laughs> got caught having a fag. <laughs> <laughs> you know it. <laughs> what do you mean do I know it? Oh, narrow it down. It Those got... are chimps are caught with wood binds. <laughs> right. It got having caught a... having a fag. So it was sent to court. <laughs> and, uh. Yeah, was it underage? It was, it was, uh... And it got someone to go into the newsagent forum. Like, Did he get a bigger gorilla yeah, to go into the newsagent and get it 20 Rothmans? It ended up doing time. Because it was, it was... Go back a minute, wait a minute, whoa, 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 No, whoa. I don't know the f- that's, that's as much as I know, so there's no point questioning. That is as much as you know, isn't it? Yeah. Quite literally. <laughs> Sorry, but why did he go to prison? Uh, it's, it's against the law to have a monkey having a fag, where <laughs> in a built-up area. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's against the law for a monkey to have a fag. What if he got it himself? Even if it just- what about if it, if it earned it himself, just like moving tyres round or mucking mucking out the zebras? I don't know the full story. That's you something. don't know the full story, do you? But do you think- <laughs> You never do, do you? I presume you? it was a monkey from a zoo, right? Yeah. Do you think it'd be fed up, though? Because in a way, it's home from home, isn't it? When I read it, I didn't think it was that bad because I just Carl, thought, well, they don't put monkeys in prison. They didn't put the monkey in a the prison. They're overcrowded. <laughs> they haven't got the space. Well, I'll, again, I'll find it and give you the, the like the, where I got it from. And you Trump can... Harris was furious because the monkey got the top bunk. Yeah. <laughs> can I just? Uh, <laughs> and he, he did. Okay then. Oh, yeah. chimpanzee that. Another one next week. I don't think so. Blockbusters, <laughs> uh, right? Can I just yeah. uh, recap? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, uh, actually I have to say you've really stumped people this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or oh either that or they God, just can't be bothered wrong. anymore. Well, or they're wrong again. No, no, right. Uh, I think the prizes are so pitiful they can't be asked. Let me just explain it again just in case they don't understand it. It's a cryptic clue, right, right. and it makes up a band and the initial that I Sometimes. give you is the initial that the band that all the artists starts off with. So, last week, uh, well, I can't remember, but we did, we did AK an exploding pet, atomic kitten, that explains yeah. it. So very quickly, uh, number one. No, last week right. we did, uh, FP, 
uh, that you gave out the clue, F D Frida Payne. Yeah, it was uh, it was an hour. So um, the they're all right one, this week, though, are they? Yeah, the weather stinks, doesn't it? That's that's the cryptic clue, and the letter is R. Uh, number two. That's the rainy smell, boys. Right. Uh, look, Gran, just get on the boat and help us out, will you? Uh, that's R as well. And the last one, if you're gonna that's, do, that's rigging nanny. If you're gonna do that to your drink, I'd let it settle for a bit before you open it. That's CK. Right. Ricky Dot Gervais at xfm.co.uk. Plus, keep your uh, problems and queries coming in for Carl. We've got another one as well, which I'd like to give you after the next track, Carl, if I may. All right. All right. You've got a problem, haven't you? What with? Oh yeah. Listen to this, listen to this, Carl. Let's this, play Steve. a record. Let's come back with this. Oh. It's an amazing problem. <laughs> it's a god awful small affair. Wow. You're getting celebrities asking me questions now, Carl. That's David Bowie. Is there life on Mars? Mm. Do you reckon? Uh, I reckon there's more going on than just us. <coughs> messing about. I reckon. I hope so. I think. Tell Steve your problem that you were, you aired to me. Well, um, do you know how like I'm always thinking about stuff when I'm washing up? Mm. I'm, um, just, I'm just gonna look at Steve for the reaction when this question right. comes out. Okay. There's been a few things I've been thinking about. Do you know like how I try to confuse a computer by putting in Y in the search engine? Yeah. So, so along the lines of that, I, I, I was thinking in the week, if uh, you put a chameleon on a mirror, what would happen? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and also, this, this is a bit of a bigger issue. We're always making more and more stuff, right, um, in the world. You know, big buildings, big planes. Mm -hmm. Big boats and that. Will we ever get to a point where all this is too heavy for the world to handle? Right. What errors he made there, Steve? <laughs> what physical, scientific error has he made there with that question? I can't. I can't begin to explain it. Carl, we're not getting the rocks from other planets. It's already here. It's like having a. a it's like having. Um, a big pile of books in a room, and then moving them over to the other side of the room and build a thing going, oh, can the room take it? I'm building a lot of things out of these books. What about, what about plastic? Where's that come from? Are the chemicals that existed on the planet. Yeah. Do you see, do, do you see the point? Hang on a minute, though. What about a little tree? You plant that as an acorn, it grows, right? That's bigger, that's more stuff. Yeah. Don't listen to him, Carl. He's patronising you. What about you. acorns and that, though? Right. They they take they grow from minerals and proteins already in our atmosphere or in our um, the mass of Earth. What about a cat, Carl? Right, you get it. It's a very tiny kitten, but it grows up and it's bigger. Carl, he's he's doing it on purpose. Elephants. 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 They they're very small to begin with, but they get bigger and bigger and bigger, and so they get heavier and heavier. Mind you, dinosaurs have gone. You know, but. You <laughs> But you know, um, but you know that's, uh. you know famously that's how Atlantis disappeared. You know, you've heard of the, the legend of Atlantis. Have you heard of the legend of Atlantis? I think so. Go this on. was a, this was a city that existed, it's proven, yeah. right? And what happened was they just kept buying stuff in, mail order. They just <laughs> kept ordering stuff, like the king and stuff, just kept ordering stuff in, mail order. He brought girls across, carpets, you know, carpets, lot of carpets. Carpets, he kept buying, TV set, big screen TVs and stuff like that, and eventually- He bought up all the mirror. That the wise men didn't want. Yeah, he just, cause he's from like olden times, and he just kept buying stuff, crazy, like he was just a shopaholic basically. Mentor it was. And he was ludicrous, it was like, and, and in and the end it heavy. just sunk, it just sunk. Too heavy. And it just sunk. So, um, um, to the earth, the more planes we build, the more trees we let grow. Yeah. From acorns. And more than that, what about all the, uh, the people that are overeating? There's only, there's a, yeah, I, there's only yeah, one thing to do. in this world. I think we, we've got, a, I think we've got to kill off endangered species and burn trees. <laughs> That's the only way the earth <laughs> can survive. <laughs> you true mental. Right. What are you doing? <laughs> right, uh... Okay, look, quick, um, query for you. This is from, uh, Jay. He's got a problem here. Um, he says, uh, my parents won't let me ditch my studies. He's currently reading modern languages at London University. Sure. He wants to follow his dream, but his parents won't let him, of being a dancer. Carl. Worse than that, he says that they're trying to arrange a marriage to a bunch of, uh, minging daughters of people they know from good families. He doesn't know what to do, so he's got the arranged marriage coming along, and he's also got, you know, he basically wants to, you know, wants to be a dancer. His parents are forcing him into, um, something more practical. Well, the first thing, right, I don't think Live the, your dreams? the arranged marriage thing is such a bad idea. Okay. Cause I think too many people go on looks. Right. And then you soon get bored of that, mm -hmm. and you find out the person who you're knocking about with is actually not your type. Right. right? Why don't you arrange marriages for people? Well, uh, I'm just saying, right, so I'd say, uh, Jay, go along with that. I wouldn't worry about it. Okay. I mean, if they're really ugly, then, you know, don't go along with it, but if they're half bad, 
yeah. put up with it. That's sure. Right. The dancing. Brilliant. Right. <laughs> that's that solved. Brilliant. I wanted to be a dancer. <laughs> After I did the boxing, right, I joined, uh, joined a dancing thing just near, um, Man United's ground, right, called Twiggies. Right. Um, <laughs> Is went it? along, I wanted to learn some moves. And How like, old were you? Well, it was when Michael Jackson was, like, pretty big, so, about 80, 83, 84, 85, oh, yeah. something like that, around there. Um, wanted to do it, um, when I went, it was shut and it had become like a warehouse for a toilet rolls. <laughs> so in a way, I wonder what would have happened. Sorry, sorry, how is that an anecdote about you going through <laughs> dancing? Well, you I'm told me before, you but you did boxing for a while, you did dancing for a while, you had <laughs> true fight in the boxing, you didn't <laughs> even get in the pl- That's not an You- yeah, Imagine well, if that was a film! This is about <laughs> a, a boy's dream of becoming a dancer. <laughs> oh, it's shut. Next on. I mean, you- How is that a story? Yeah, that was Billy Elliot. Do you think he would have won, <laughs> it, won quite as many awards? Yeah. Yeah, a brilliant. Footloose. Alright? <laughs> yeah. I'm fed up, they've banned it. Let's go on. Oh, it's shut. Um, <laughs> do 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 do. Yeah. Flash dance. First, there was- Ah, oh, it's a warehouse. <laughs> Never mind. You. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, you'll find something else. I, I can't- I think I got a go-kart after that. <laughs> I bought a motorised go-kart and kept myself busy with that. So, <laughs> there's, always, there's always other just things. Just think, Alan Bennett has to sit down and really sweat over his stories. Yeah. yeah. He so, just opens his mouth. You are a living Alan Bennett character. So that's oh. that. So, so that's, that's all. Well, Jay, don't worry about that. There's, um, no emotional there- emotional problems, I can foresee. Uh, if you follow that advice- So the advice Sorry, there is do an arranged marriage. It, 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 if she's not If she's not ugly. minging. Yeah. If she's not completely minging. Yeah. Uh, and don't worry about dancing, get a go-kart, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> Keep your problems coming in. <laughs> Truth, Rest Your Head by Gene on XFM 104.9. Richard Javay, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. While I was, uh, with Carl in that restaurant, while I was giving him the, uh, you know, the problems that the old fellow with Viagra and the, the two fellows making love mm -hmm. in the uh, in the cubicle. Um, we came up with a new idea because um, he is he, dumping. Um, do we need him? As I say, he thinks the scientists have got together and never going to wipe out a limpet or a or a slug. Um, they, they they think they're good, but they're not that good. This is the people that are lauded as great minds, or, and Carl. Has brought them down. He's taken issue with them. Uh, like what? He went right. Um, great thinkers, and I went okay. Then um, Sir Isaac Newton, the the father of modern physics. He went. Is he the fellow with the apple? I went. Yeah. He went there again. See, why do I need to know that the Earth sucks us towards it, gravity? He said, if I was floating around, it would be a problem. I'd ask his opinion. <laughs> I went. What about Einstein? He went again. I've never needed. And this is what he said, I've never needed MC squared in my life. <laughs> the fella who invented the video, I'll watch one a day. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, though? Give credit where credit's due. Right. And I think that a lot of this stuff that was invented, like when we were talking about inventions, you know, I uh, started to look, look in books and that, finding stuff out, and there was some fella who got a mention on, on an invention site just because he came up with the fish bowl. And it's like, is it that hard? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's clearly a bowl. Sorry, you're- you're not putting him in the same category as Newton and Einstein, are you? He was on the same list. Einstein was on there. It was saying about him doing that, and Newton with the apple, and uh, who else was in there? Da Vinci, whatever. He- he was Leonardo on there. Da Vinci. Yeah. Um, uh, is he the so, one who did so Mona Lisa as well? Yeah. Yeah. He said- he said it took him twelve years to paint the lips. <laughs> I don't think that's like, that good. That it takes that long. I saw, you know, when you think, saw Tony Hart do like a, an Aborigian man with a elephant in the background took about three minutes. <laughs> Aborigian. <laughs> an Aborigian. Yeah. Really? And an elephant. So what about some of the big names? Well, Just, on, what's, your, what's your, what's your first reaction when I say some big names from history? Go on. Gandhi. Uh, again, what did he do? <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Right. Good point. Good point. Okay. Good point. But you do, yeah, alright. Do you, do you understand what he represents? Well, go on, tell me, and then I'll tell you if he deserves to. But you be know, his, his whole kind of attitude towards peaceful, peaceful protest. You know, it's quite a sort of modern idea. You know, you know, very much the forefather of you know uh, the '60s movement. You know, where people would sort of sit in, 
you know, in protest, you know, Steve, song, Steve, perhaps Steve, over Steve, Steve. Right, look at the glazed look on his Did face. Did I lose him on Gandhi? Yeah. Yeah. So if just, Pick it's not- Pick someone else, do someone else. Pick someone else. Okay, okay. Right. Well, uh, someone you know about this, obviously, um, oh, let's think, a great, a great thinker, isn't part of Kingdom Brew now. Right, yeah, he's alright. Brilliant, thanks. Um, <laughs> what about- What about Jesus uh, Christ? Well, I'm thinking more your modern day, like your Richard Branson's and that. Okay. Who, like, you know- I would- to be fair, I wouldn't put Branson up there with- with Gandhi. Christ, New and, Christ and Einstein. Einstein. But why? Stephen Hawking. Because he's mainly known for having a beard and a funny jumper. To be honest, yeah, you have to start including, uh, no, Noel that's, Edmunds. that's Noel Edmonds, yeah, you're, you're getting mm. confused there. But Branson's a businessman, he's not one of the great, sort of, you know, scientific yeah, minds. I think or in time, thinkers. right, in time- Whereas Clive out. Sinclair, in his little car, <laughs> on his way to work, brilliant. No, but in time, there's certain things, like the apple falling off a tree. Right. Whoever was sat there would have gone, that's a bit odd. Do you know what I mean? It's just that yeah. they were there first. But to be fair, Christ instigated two thousand years of, um, religion based on his teachings. Richard Branson, to be fair, he did launch Mike Oldfield's Junior Bells. Yeah, They're see not the quite difference. comparable. See it the just, difference there. It, it depends what you get impressed by, doesn't it? Suzanne's always saying- Maybe that. I- maybe Newton was there, he was coming up with a brilliant theory, like, amazing, he was probably inventing the helicopter, right? The apple hit him in the head and he went, uh, the earth's sucking me. The earth's sucking me. Do you, you know what I mean? Could have happened. But so, you know, my girlfriend's always saying, uh, you know, what impresses you? Yeah. You know, because she was saying the other day, do you want to go to Egypt? And I said, no, not really. No. She goes, but don't you want to see the pyramids? Not interested. It's like, I've seen them on the telly. Uh, okay. You know. Sure. Are they going to be that much more amazing when you see them yeah, in real life? Yeah, good point, good point, good point. Uh, How did you ever move out of your street in Manchester? But hang on, no, sorry, I'm interested to know because this is a, this is something that, um, that he came up with, and this is someone that loves him and that he respects, so I'm interested to see. What, what was your answer to what impresses you? Um, I don't think I did answer it. I just said, you know, the odd, the odd thing. <laughs> you just said I'm asleep. <laughs> <laughs> little things, little <coughs> things. Like I, I ran home the other night and said, oh, I've just learnt something today. She goes, go on. And um, you know, Lego bricks. Oh yeah. The name came about because some kid's mum, the kid was messing with the bricks, and she said, Lego of them, and come and have your dinner. Play record. It's got to be rubbish. It's got to Play be rubbish. It's always rubbish, isn't it? Well, they're they're, 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 they're Scandinavian for a start. So, so it's well, yeah. 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 Let go. Boys are back in town. Thin Lizzy, what a classic. Beautiful. Carl, should that be our anthem, me, you and Steve, eh? Hey, <laughs> yeah. Can I just go get a bit, a couple of bits of admin out of the way? Go on. We've had an email from Peter Goff. He has said, uh, "Where is Richard Anderson? Where he, is Dickers? He only tunes in to listen to him. Where's Dickley? Where's little Dicky Docker? Little Dicky Anders has not uh, emailed. And if you don't listen normally, uh, Anders is our biggest fan. He normally loves he's got some... us. He lo I, I, I just absolutely. But he's normally the world got of... a little bit of constructive criticism, oh, well, which we always mean, appreciate. Not... Yeah, yeah, we're open to that. Sure, <laughs> sure, <laughs> exactly. sure. Rob, so... are you? <laughs> I'm gonna shove this up your. <laughs> so if Dicky Anders is uh, listening, then you might want to uh, get in touch. Uh, also, uh, d dear Ricky, I've developed a bit of a fetish for the way you say winner in uh, your hit sitcom, The Office. Um, I'm trying <laughs> to get my fiancé to say it, but he hasn't quite mastered it yet. Anyway, we're getting married in Las Vegas in a couple of weeks' time. Could you please say winnish on air, uh, as a sort of uh, early wedding present? It's becoming one of the most popular requests at weddings now, <laughs> the, me saying winnish. So, uh, winnish. There's a few I didn't get in. Um, Thatcham. <laughs> Shinfield. <laughs> so, there's, there's a, a little Woodley. There you are. There you go. That's uh, that's beautiful. That's keeping uh, them happy. Good luck to them. That's uh, I, that's, uh, that's uh, Leopard. Le Leopard. I saw one of those stupid email names. If you're going to email us, at least mention your name, because otherwise uh, it makes me sound like a, a fool. A Leopard, the original name for a giraffe. Interesting. Thanks for that. Whereas Lego was yes. uh, invented when a mother had sent someone to get some. Though there's no name for them. She went, "Can you go and get some?" There was a gap. He went, yeah. "Oh yeah, I'll go and get some," because they weren't called anything. Brought them back. Started playing with the. <laughs> and then she went, look, give me those. He went, no. She went, let go, you idiot. Yeah, the actual explanation, various people have emailed us in or phoned in now. The company was set up in 1934, it's a Danish company, obviously. Yeah. Uh, Lego comes from the Danish words leg got, which means play well, and it was later discovered that it was also a Latin phrase that meant I study or I put together. That's the actual, uh, where where did you get that from? But the thing is, you see, that's where learning's got to be interesting, because if it even started like that, I'd just go, I'm not interested. Mm. I'd be looking for Oh. So if a, f a fact might be true, but it's just not good enough. It's, it's not interesting enough for you. Not interesting enough. Okay, another quick right. dilemma for so you, So if, 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 um, Newton would have said, 
uh, apples are attracted to our heads, be careful, they, they attack you, that would have been interesting. Yeah. Total bollocks, but you'd have been interested, therefore, in all modern physics. <laughs> All right. Um, here's another dilemma for you, a quick one from Kate. She says that she's a single woman, she's six foot tall. Uh, recently she's found herself being approached by men of, let's say, restricted height. And she's not desperate, but is it ever acceptable in her, you know, she wants to know now, is it ever acceptable for a tall lady to go out with a person of restricted growth? Uh, what do you think about that? If you see that on the street, do you think it looks bizarre, do you think it looks odd? Or so a six foot with woman with, um... Someone of a, a dwarfish persuasion. <laughs> You can, we can't say sort of that or, 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 or the or the magic word, but you I mean no, no, a, no. Little, a little a little a little um, a little fella. Yeah, is that uh, so? There's a noticeable uh, difference in their height. Is that ever a problem? Do you she's feel? It, she's six foot. He's three foot four. Yeah. If I saw it, I'd just think she's doing it. Okay, know. okay, let's not do this now. No, 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 no. Come on, she's doing it. What? Oh. No, for, for attention in a way. <laughs> because right. there's loads of other See, people. See, I told you, Steve. Yeah, yeah, I know, but I'm just just. I mean, is that serious? I think so. Well, I oh, mean, if it, whatever God, makes her happy. Please don't ask Carl no, these sort of questions. No, but do you know what I mean? If it makes her happy, then do it. But in a way, you're not gonna have a normal life. Oh, <laughs> God. No, but you're not, because you're gonna get sick. I'm There's so no point bringing sorry. trouble onto yourself. Carl does not necessarily reflect the opinions of, of anybody the else in the world. <laughs> 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 Hold on. This woman. She doesn't live in a forest in a little <laughs> cottage, does she? She hasn't got long black hair and wears a sort of- She says the guy she's going out with is a miner. Really? In a crystal mine, yeah. And he just sings all day on his Has way to work. Has he got six mates? Apparently so. That- yeah. okay, what is it that, Carl? I'm- I'm still- th sorry, I wasn't listening, I just was thinking about- Someone just called up and called him dopey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Didn't uh, they? I mean, whatever. Do you know what I mean? Why? What's the matter with you? What's the matter with you today? I'm- I'm just saying. I'm just, what, is, is, what, you're fed up with people, um, uh, uh, taking issue with some of the stupid things you say. Lego was invented by a mother going, Lego of that. What are we gonna do with all the buildings? The earth might collapse. What do you expect people to say? Well, Even our listeners know you're talking rubbish, and some of those d d aren't allowed to wear socks. I mean... Listen, right, last week when I did Do We Need Em, um, do you know when I called up, um, one of the museums and I... Science Museum. Yeah, are you talking to me? Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying, I, I wanted to tell you before when the song was on, but you're so busy listening to it. Yeah, oh, God, to... oh, oh, was I so busy listening to a song I was playing? Yeah, but we're doing a radio show, aren't All right, we? what's your point? Well, I just wanted to say, she emailed in to say I got her name wrong, so I'm just apologising for that. What did you just call her? I think I called her Jessica. What was her name? I don't know, I've got it on email somewhere. Well, this is not an apology! <laughs> no, no, I'm You've just got saying... it wrong again! You've not even said her real name! How is that an apology? Well, I remember, I read the email, so, uh, yeah, I-, I But yeah, who are you apologizing to? Apologizing to? I think her name's Jackie, I think. Oh, you've got it wrong again, haven't you? you... Well, uh, well, anyway, and she just said if you, you know, if you want to see dinosaurs and that, go to the, uh, museum. You were complaining about that as well, weren't you? You went to a museum and there was too many dinosaurs. You just see, he said you just need four. <laughs> no, well, Steve, have you been to the one at, in, in Knightsbridge? I think this so. This one that I called up, right? It's nice, you go in, you get a good collection of stuff, you walk in, there's three or four dinosaurs, you've had enough, right? <laughs> go to- I went into New York, right, went to the museum there, hundreds of them. You can't move for dinosaurs. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like they're responsible for them being extinct. <laughs> <laughs> There's loads of them. So all I'm saying is, if you want to see a dinosaur, um, go to the one near Knightsbridge. They've got a nice selection, some old vases and stuff. <laughs> it's worth going. So, do you uh, work for them? Because that was a pretty big sell. Well, that just that you it. could work that over to quite an advert, I imagine. <laughs> Brilliant, <laughs> Carl. What, you're fed up, aren't you? Because you had to get up early. Well, that's another thing, but let's- will we give out the answers for- Let's do that after we've played the next tune. Um, I have to say that the- I'm wondering if Rockbusters, like Do We Need Em, is beginning to run its course, because yeah. this week we've had very, very few right answers. I think what you're just you getting too complicated. Yeah, because this- his clues and his answers are rubbish! Why don't you start doing proper ones? These are good. We started off easy. If I you don't remember. know, these are- I think some of them are a bit tortuous. They but don't anyway. work! Some of them don't work! Well, come up with some stuff then. Let's play a tune. Well I have! And uh, we'll come back with the Rockbusters <laughs> answers in a second. You haven't come up with anything. <laughs> <laughs> the Grave Diggers. 1-800-SUICIDE, it's a good tune that. I've always yeah. enjoyed it. XFM 104.9. Well that's nearly it from uh, Ricky Gervais, that's me, Steve Merchant. 
one of the 50 most eligible bachelors in Britain. I hope people as well, if you buy Company Magazine, if there's any ladies listening, every week of course I've played you a song for the ladies, and I hope now that you'll be able to return the favour and maybe vote for me, buy Company Magazine, vote for me, so I become, uh, 50, the, the, the number one that's eligible so, so, bachelor. Well, that wouldn't mean anything then, would it? What do you mean? Well, it wouldn't mean anything then, would it, if they voted you and you got, even got into, you know, the top 30, it wouldn't mean anything because you've asked them to do it. What are you talking about? Because well, it, it means that they care for me enough and that they are impressed and charmed by enough that they've actually made that effort. That's beautiful. That's I, beautiful think that, I think that would ruin it. <laughs> well, you know, let's wait and see what the results are. Do you think, do you think, what do you, I mean, just, uh, you know, I'm mean, getting off that, you know, because we don't want Steve to use as a platform to get in the top 48. That's bound to, he's bound to be a couple of people. Um, but, uh, what do you think of him now, Kyle? Now you've known him for these many years. I mean, what do you think of his looks objectively now that you've known him? Can you remember what you first thought? He, like I say, he's changed a bit. He's sorted himself out a bit. Yeah. Looks a bit better. How? was he done? What's he I done? I don't know. His hair's better. Yeah, what was it before? It was just a bit nothing-y. Do you know what I mean? It was like a... Just like if you just let your hair grow and do its own thing. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas now it's got a style. Yeah. So yeah. it looks good. Glasses, he's changed. His glasses are stylish. Yeah. Um, just stay sat down. <laughs> right, rockbusters, rockbusters. Some people like tall men. <laughs> yeah, go on. Oh, that's, yeah. Uh, right. right, first one, uh, the weather stinks, doesn't it? Yeah. That was R, which was rainbow. Right. Rainbow? Like, like rain is the weather and it smells like bow. Body bow? Odor. Body odour. No, it's B-O. It's B-O, that's B-O. It's pronounced B-O. Well, yeah, but you've got to play- It's not pronounced bow, and it's not spout bow. Um, Who calls it bow? Everyone knows it's B-O. Um, <laughs> what, you don't care? You don't care that that doesn't work? Well, they got it, so again, as long one as they're getting it- One person got as it, as Carl. It. One person got it. Of all the emails, one person got it. Um, second one, uh, look, Gran, just get on the boat, will you, and help us out. Go on. That was R. That was Ronan. Ronan, right? Ronan, who's Ronan? <laughs> Ronan. Who's well, Ronan, Ronan? Ronan Keaton. But he's known well, as Ronan Keaton. Keaton. No, it's oh, okay. not. No, it's not anymore though. He's gone on, on his own, hasn't he? He's just known as Ronan. No, he's not. No, he's not. It's Ronan Keaton. He's always been known as Ronan Keaton. All right. Um, <laughs> so that doesn't work either. Go on. Third one. <laughs> Next. Uh, if you're going to do that to your drink, I'd let it settle for a little bit before you open it. That was CK. What? Shake a can. Shake a can. If you're going to shake, <laughs> you can. This is the worst competition ever. So it's Chaka. Have, have you got? A it's Chaka. It's Chaka. It's Chaka Khan. Shake a Khan. No, Chaka Khan. What you got? Chaka Khan might have worked it's, to who, throw a can. Who got all three right then? Well, well, because basically what happened was people we're just emailed this. in three guesses. We're stopping and this. The, and the guesses that were right came from Mandy Thompson in Hendon. That's ruined that. Frankly, one, well, that's that's run that into the ground. That's do we need him ruined? No, we can't that's, just bin everything that's, on that's, one week. That's that's uh, I, I, I don't think we're going to get that. Oh, they're not as good as they think they are because you've only picked on Newton Einstein. You don't know anyone else. You don't know who Gandhi is. Um, uh, chimpanzee, that you've you've run out of. Uh, I did like, like the one. jingle for that though. <laughs> oh, chimpanzee that! That was a great jingle. Yeah. But sadly, um, we won't be able to use that again. So who was one anyway? Well, it was Mandy Thompson I mentioned, but as I say, she guessed, so I mean, she can have the prizes, she's welcome to them. But, uh, yeah. I think we should knock it on the head, Carl. Maybe she should come up with something yeah. new. No, I think it's still got a few weeks in it. I think we should ta take some time off. Well. <laughs> yeah. What about, like, the foreseeable future? Don't know. Songs that for the lovers. Do you want to just play A song that for the one? ladies. Listen, um, you know what a, you know, I think it's maybe the March issue of Company Magazine. Buy that. Uh, top 50 most eligible people. There's probably an address or a phone number to call. And here's another song for the ladies, maybe just to charm you further. Tom the Model by Beth Gibbons and Rustin Man. Carl, say and goodbye and say it, say it nicely like you're happy. See you later. Oh, is that the best you can do? Clocks from the cold play. <laughs> Next FM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and back, Carl Pilkington. Hey. He's raring to go. It's nice when you have a bit of time off, isn't it? Yeah, how long have you had off now? About three then, weeks. About three weeks, three weeks yeah. Um, we can't do that because we're sort of self employed and we'd be letting people down, but it's different when you, you know, you get paid anyway whether you turn up or not. But good to have I'm you never, back. I'm, I'm never off ill. No, That's the first time I've no, ever I just, been off ill. Well, no, I mean, just, just, you're off two weeks and then you're off. 
No, I just I wish I was the kind of person who could let down an audience I know, of, of regular really, listeners. Yeah. yeah, but I was, like I say. Well, no, we spoke to you, you weren't that bad. A cold, you don't go home for a cold. Um, we were discussing this last night in the pub, and, uh, you know, you don't go home for a cold. Um, okay, then, so moving on, what have we got then? We've got oh some great cold, songs. I've brought in the Smiths, I've brought in Buzz Cox, I've brought in Neil Young. I know Steve's got some hip hop. Some great hip hop. Uh, I've got some great Elvis Costello. It's, it's gonna be great. Uh, Carl, come on, concentrate, you've been away through it. It's just a noise. No, stop saying that. What? You're annoying me now. Why? Oh, what, what are you gonna do? Go in ill? Oh, oh, he's annoyed me. Oh, has he? Yeah, I got a bit of and I'm a little bit annoyed. Can I have some time off but still get paid? Yes, of course you can. Steve, Tom. right? You called me up, winding me up about this. I'm right. I'm I'm nearly th I'm thirty. Right, I'm thirty now. I can only remember being off two times. Oh, his memory's going as well. You'll have to <laughs> time off. <laughs> and both of them were when I, when I was at school. School. One, What's one, school? One when it was windy. What did yeah. you have time off because it was windy? But to be honest, Carl, that lasted no, no, for wait. seven years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your time wait, off wait, at school. Wait. Why did you have time off because it was windy? Were you windy or was it windy outside? No, it, was, it was a really. It was like when your when auntie wasn't out the window, was she? Yeah. When the winds were bad in the seventies, I mean, I'm said, oh. Was it? Whoa, 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 whoa. What? I remember space offers and flares. I don't yeah. remember the winds being bad in the seventies. <laughs> well, my, my mum just said, uh, you might get blown into the road, so don't. Worry. <laughs> <laughs> she had so much faith in you, didn't she? As a human being. Is that why she got fired from the pie shop? <laughs> I'm not coming in today, I might get blown into god the room. The, oh god. The funny god. thing it was, right, Steve, they, they had this, this thing going at school, because a lot of people used to wag it back then. Used right? to what? Wag it, sort of not go in. Yeah. Right. Right. And, um, they sort of tried to make it interesting for you by giving you a... An education. A certificate. A right. certificate if you yeah. did a full week. Re reward for the rest yeah, of your exactly, life with yeah. achievement. That right. sort of, that sort of carrot. And mm. also, like, let you go home at three o'clock on a Friday. Right. right. If, if you'd done a, like, a full week and that. Right? Yeah. Mm. So it was, uh, it was lovely weather all week. Then it just sort of changed on a Friday. And I got off and it was all windy. It was windy said, as for Friday on Sunday, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. Uh, don't, don't, you know, if you don't want, don't go in because, you know, you might get blown into the road and that. So I said, all right, then I'll stay off. And, uh, so why did she uh, <laughs> told you to hold on, hold on to a fence or <laughs> yeah. walk you there? What's this? Don't go out. <laughs> Immediately like give up. I love this getting blown into the road. Is that based on your cats that kept getting blown into the road? Well, so I got to got to school on the Monday, right? And the teacher said, Took right, long time. today, uh, to punish you, you're the only one who wrecked the whole week, right? Everyone else came in, you didn't. So everyone else is going home at three o'clock today. But you're not. Brilliant. Serves you right. And, uh, and I wasn't bothered though, it was great because I said, well, you'll have to stay with me, won't you? And Brilliant. it was great. So all I did for half an hour was doodle and stuff. It was great that afternoon. Yeah. And that, that was ages ago. That was like when I was about eight. And that's one of the times I was off ill. Yeah. So it was, but that wasn't even ill, that was wind. Yeah. Well, yeah. So yeah. Right. Yeah, it's, it's a bit different when you're in the adult world, though, Carl. You can't just not turn up because you've got a bit of a cold or you're a bit fed up. I mean, we had an appointment four o'clock Thursday, wasn't it? And he had to call. He said, I'll cancel it. Oh, I went on. Meeting went on a bit late. Yeah. Time management. Get things done. If it was important, you'd get it done. Play a record, Carl. Pull your finger out, please. Elvis Costello, Alison. What a great track that mm. is. Beautiful. Well, Carl, we'd better tell them all the new great features we've come up with in the time you were off. <laughs> right, well, we'll, uh, we've got the film thing still going. Okay. Yeah. Um, That's where you take a lead role or a, or, or a major role in a, in a Hollywood blockbuster, which we then give away on VHS worth six ninety nine. <laughs> And uh, something new we're trying out because Rockbusters. He's dead, thankfully. Yes. He's uh, he's gone for a bit. It's over. Um, crosswords. Crosswords. Oh, this sounds intriguing. Where would you get the idea from? <laughs> what's the, what's the basic uh, <laughs> format of this? Right. What I, what I've done is I've yeah. um, yeah. take like a, a popular saying from the show. A popular yeah. what? A popular saying, something that crops up quite a lot in the show. In our show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, first thing that spring sort of sprang to mind was. Uh, there's this airy Chinese kid. Oh, okay. classic. But more, more commonly it would be something like, Carl, you're an idiot. Yeah, play Carl, record, you're you a fool. Where, Carl, you're a fool. Oh, what did you mean? You let us down again. Yeah, you Carl, where have here. you been? Yeah, oh, you... you've got a headache, have you, Carl? Yeah. You better have a lie oh. down. Typical yeah. phrases like that, yeah, sure. Yeah, typical phrases like that, yeah, yeah. Carl, you're a loser. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. 
And um, <laughs> what I've done, I've got a load of different songs and took words <laughs> from the different songs and then joined them together yeah. to make There's This Airy Chinese Kid. And then people have to email in and say what the five songs were. It sounds like the most complicated game ever. I'm looking forward to it. You, have you heard any of this, Rick? Because I've not heard this at all. Yeah. I'm not familiar with this. Well, all it is, it, it, it'll go like, Eric oh, John, he's a kid! And that's, it's from sort of four different songs. Right. And you've got to identify the songs. Right. Uh, wow. How many songs in this, Carl? Five. Yeah. Five. There's this hairy Chinese kid. Okay. Right. So, <laughs> and uh, what are the prizes for that? Are oh, these yeah. the prizes? Yeah. All right, well, let me tell you what they are. They're not too bad, actually. We've got, um, Live Forever, which I assume is a, a CD that ties in with this Think new film. Think of that! A well-known phrase from the show, and it's Hairy Chinese Kid. <laughs> yeah. What other- where would you There is no that other radio show in, in the life? world! I- this is- go on. If you've just tuned in, yeah, I mean, what, what are you thinking? what do you think if you've just tuned in? You're going, well-known phrase from the show, Hairy Chinese Kid. <laughs> oh, yeah, classic. <laughs> They'll be playing that in charades this Christmas. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this is uh, a CD that ties in with this new film, Live Forever, which was, is all about uh, Britpop, and so there's stuff on there from Oasis, Blur, Pulp, etc. Uh, we've also got uh, another Red Dwarf DVD, uh, Marion and Jeff, the first series of that, excellent. <coughs> That's on VHS, sadly, but uh, never mind. And um, and also uh, the very best of Led Zeppelin, a two CD set there with uh, all the classics on. So that's not uh, bad prizes, actually. Can't, you've, you've done yourself We've upped it. We've upped it. We're getting serious now. We're playing in the you know the bigger league. It, we've upped the stakes. We want Heat Magazine not to, you know, lose touch with us just because Rockbusters is gone. Yeah. I think they're still behind us. We're so we've got, we've got, uh, we've got film, you appear in a film, we've got, uh, crosswords. How is that to do with the crossword? Because I've got words and sort of cross them. Okay. Right, you don't really cross them. <laughs> but, uh, good. So words, we're playing a game called Words. <laughs> Word Song. Hello and welcome to Word Song. <laughs> Brilliant. And, uh, and obviously I imagine there'll be some more great music. But we've got a new feature, haven't we? Which one's this? Are we doing, um, Within the Monkey News, the new oh, feature? Oh, Steve. I'm excited. You know Monkey News is my favourite feature, so what have you uh, added to it? Explain it. Right, well, uh, there's been loads of stuff going on in the past few weeks, right? Uh, but for the times when I struggle, when, when sort of monkeys have had a quiet week, <laughs> and there isn't that much news going on, sure. right? come up with this thing. I sort of speak to an expert. I've, I've spoke to him already. You, right? spoke, you spoke to an expert? Yeah. A monkey expert? Yeah. Uh-huh. And I ask him a question. Wow. Right? The feature, it's got a good name. You know, that's the way I work. Yep. Cheapest chimps. <laughs> <laughs> right? Okay. And what I do, I ask him a question about, you know, or how much does it cost to, you know, keep one? How much does it cost to, uh, you know, feed one for a week? Yeah. All this sort of stuff. So I, I give out like a monkey story, and if that isn't enough for people, they'll also learn something else at the end of it. Right. Yeah. So like... It sounds fascinating, can I say right now? Yeah. That's just some of the things that we've come up with. Play a record, Carl. Please still continue to listen there. Yeah. Baby, come on, come on down. Richard Ashcroft, buy it in bottles on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Carl, I need the phone number of your girlfriend. Let me explain why. I was lucky enough, once again, to be on your quiz team yeah. this week. Um, uh, Ricky, still to beat me. He's still to beat me with his team, yeah. We, second, uh, second I came. We, uh, we, the, the, the gang here and some friends, we uh, sometimes go down to a pub quiz in the local area and um, I was very nicely, I was invited by Carl to be on his team. Uh, twice now I've been on that team. Uh, Ricky's always on another team. And um, I, what can I say, Carl? I, I, do you mind me saying this now? Because I've, I've, I've analysed the team, and it's your, very much your team, and, uh, and you've put the team together, you've recruited some excellent personnel, your girlfriend's uh, very, very good on the team, yeah. as is one of her uh, work colleagues, and uh, you normally bring in, you know, someone like myself. I like to think I've been providing certain something with the entertainment section. I seem to remember last time I answered at least six or seven questions that other people hadn't got, so uh, I felt I, I provided something there. Um, Carl, I, I rather like John Harvey Jones, who used to be called in to sort of troubleshoot companies. I see why you are not winning, ever, and it's rather pricey. Uh, contest, isn't it? It costs a tenner to enter per Each. person, yeah, yeah. and unless you get in the top three, you're not you're not going to get to see your money back. No. So, um, I think you're going to maybe need to step down from the team because Carl, Ooh. I'm not sure. I am not sure. Ooh. You you consider yourself a kind of player manager, but frankly, I'm not sure you're providing enough. 
Right. See, this is this is funny because as bad as I imagine you are, I don't think Steve would make it into my team, so he's getting a bit cocky here. I want to know what your opinion of him because he's told me he's great on it. Well, it you, you bang out of order first of all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you have a good night when you're with us? Um, I tell you what, I wish I I wish I hadn't lost a tenner every time I've come down. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that well, would have improved it. You <clears throat> point out there about the football analogy. Mm-hmm. Alex Ferguson, yeah. when did he score a goal? Right. He doesn't. He tells the others how to do it. Mm. Yeah. Right. Mm. That's, that's he doesn't role, take up one of the eleven though, does he? No, exactly. It's not like you can only field ten. Yeah, because. Uh, <laughs> We only really got ten again. I, yeah. I want to be in the eleven. <laughs> exactly. You stop running around in midfield, nah, falling no. over. Yeah, shouting. Oh, what have I told you? Yeah. No. Right. I'll yeah. admit. And right? there's a limit of five players. We should explain that. That's the point. Yeah, there's, there's only a, five players there's on the players. team. Players. Yeah. So. Yeah, so. But it was pretty tricky on Tuesday, though, wasn't it? It was one of the tougher. T t t tell tell everyone one. the one question you got right. It was oh. something about. Uh, well, tell us the answer. The two words you had to say to get the answer. Danny Minogue. Danny Minogue. <laughs> <laughs> that was what you provided, Danny Minogue. <laughs> is this valuable? As well, no, 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 not really, because because, because there was at least two of us who also knew the answer. Oh, well, he, uh, we, we he gave him, we gave him, we, provide, we, no, exactly, we gave it to Carl. We massaged his ego, oh, but dear. um, oh, I right. just feel Carl. I, 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 do you know what? I'm a little, I feel a bit bad now because I just sort of either had a crushed face. Then. Le, le, can I just it, tell it, you right it, now? He just can't believe this. Can I just tell you right now? I think the problem is this. I think there's that precious fifth position that is not being filled at the moment, I think consistently enough by a decent player, right? You've got a solid team. I'm thinking if you want to remain on the team, you are going to have to pull your finger out and find a fifth member that is going to provide, and I'll tell you where the weaknesses are, I can tell you right now, mate, the weaknesses are natural history and science. Oh. Something which Ricky Gervais is scoring on week in, week out on his team. There's, there is a few Now, if he was available for a transfer, we could be fine, but we've got to find someone to fill in that space. Otherwise, I'm either going to quit or you're going to have to step down, because I don't think I can be on a team where, where, where there is these loses obvious deficiencies. There and, are visible deficiencies and, in the And, you know, the ten pounds. That's ten pounds. I'm not made of money. That's once a month. I've, I've seen him depressed for two hours when he lost twenty pounds at a casino don't after bring five it back. hours don't bring, don't bring that back. Don't yeah. bring up that again. Yeah, yeah. That, that story. He doesn't like wasting money, Carl. You know that. What do you think? What do you think? What's the solution? We've got to be- we've got to think proactively now. We've got to sort this out. See, there's always other things going on in my mind when I'm in that pub quiz. For me, it's just a little bit of fun. Sure. It's a night out. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Uh -huh. Suzanne enjoys it. Yeah. It's a bit of a get together. We have a chat beforehand. Yeah. We have a bit of fun. Yeah. But there was other things on my mind. What Carl, thinking? I could do that here. I don't no, have wait, to lose a tenner. Wait, what were you thinking during the quiz then when the questions were coming out? What were you thinking of? Well, what it was, right, just before the quiz started, I had to go to the toilet, right? Because the rule is, right, people who don't go to it, once it starts, phones off, oh, yeah, no you more can't toilet. Leave the room, we yeah. take it dead serious, don't yeah, we, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I went to the toilet. Now, I'm not being out of order here, it just got me thinking, right? I went to the toilet, the gay fella in there, right? There was a gay fella in there? Gay fella in the toilet. Now, well, how, how could you, you tell? How did you know? Just typical, you know, everything about it, right? It! Everything about it, right, yeah. Oh. Well, large like hand of my moustache, what, what, leather what, what, cap. But, but, plug, Zamel Nitro, <laughs> could I just say that these views do not reflect the views of the management of XFM or me and Steve. Go or on, most Carl. of the people in this country. On go, you on, go. go on, Carl. What's your problem? Yeah, but this is what I'm worried about, really. But this is why I only got Danny Minogue right. <laughs> right? Because this was floating around my mind. <laughs> Went She's to the a toilet. Big guy, I can't now, see. going to the toilet, they have, they have like men's cubicle and they have women's cubicle. Yeah. Now, without sounding out of order, is it wrong for me to think <laughs> gay men should have their own little cubicle. Go in! They should <laughs> have their own- well not cubicle, you mean an actual toilet, yeah. I suppose. When I was at the urinal, yeah. normally, you know, there's a fella there and then you go, alright, and there's no pressure. But I couldn't- I couldn't go. I was thinking, should I wait? If I go into the toilet, it'll look obvious. Yeah. I had loads of pressure and but this was going on. what were you worried on. about? I'm so sorry. What I'm were you so concerned sorry, about? Viewers. I'm so well, sorry. Well, it's like, right, listen, when I was a kid, right, <laughs> And it's alright for you to go into women's toilets when you're a kid, it's like, oh, it's a bit cute, yeah. right? As long as you're not, like, over fifteen or something, right? Right. But when I was a kid, I went into a toilet, and women, when they use their little cubicles, they don't shut the door. Some of them just sit down on the- on the toilet, yeah. right? And you see everything. And, uh, <laughs> no, seriously, that's probably one of the first times I saw, like, a woman. Yeah. 
that, right, and my auntie Nora when she was staying over. <laughs> what happened with your auntie Nora? She was, um, she's into wearing caftans. Into wearing what? You know, caftans. Oh, oh yeah. What caftans? Big, bellowy sort of dresses. Right, so. right. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I used to sit on the floor at home in front of the telly. Sure. She was on the chair behind. Yeah. She did a bit of a, sort of a Sharon Stone scene. Oh, God. Yeah. Did you see it? There was no underwear? No. <laughs> what, what age were you? What was it like? What age were you? It was like a ripped tennis ball. So. <laughs> what? <laughs> right, we're off air. We're off air. Either that will put us in for the Sonys. <laughs> That's how I'm living. Ice tea. That's how I'm living. Bit of old yeah. school hip hop. Where's our tea? Oh, right. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. Go and make me a cup of coffee or something. Well, before you do that, can I just qualify something? I'm a little bit concerned yeah. about your your toilet discussion. Well, what exactly is your point again? I'm yeah, just a bit bemused. You see, it's it's a tricky one. All I'm saying is right. There I was at the pub quiz. I go to the toilet. Not thinking about anything. I try <laughs> to go. Right. There's a little gay fella next to me. <laughs> I love this little gay fella. Now, the weird thing is, there's nothing stopping him having a little, little glance, right? Because he's allowed in, in the fella's toilet. Yeah. Now, I'm not allowed to go into the woman's toilet and have a little, have a little look round. <laughs> right. <laughs> so all I'm saying is, should they have another, another toilet area? What, for gay people? Yeah. And... So this would be gay men and lesbians? Uh Is that going to complicate things? Well, I mean, I can only assume, I mean, to what point, uh, that's your question, right? If you're intimidated, that's, I mean, that, that, that's a shame. But, you know, most gay men aren't looking at your knob. You know that. What do you mean? I can only say that 99.9% .9 of gay men who use a urinal standing next to what they assume is a heterosexual man, aren't looking at his knob. And what are they doing then? They're, they're emptying their bladder. Mm. <laughs> no, but the thing is, you, I you, can't, you, I can't talk you're well, saying, Carl. You're saying like, you know, about would you have one toilet for lesbian women and gay fellas, right? Well, does that mean, yeah, would it be mixed? Would it just be, well, would, it be have a, would it have a man? And one, that's a of man, but one little picture of a woman there, and then, what? What would the little icon be? To a man and a woman. A man and a woman. Just having a chat? Yeah. yeah. In pink and dark. But you, you couldn't mix them, because then what would happen is, you'd get people who, who were going, oh, I'll, I'll play, I'll play up to this a bit. Or yeah. pretend to be gay. And, yeah, you know, sort of grow a moustache and shave their head. And pretend to be a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So, so, well, I see, so you know people pretending to be gay so they could go in and have a look at the lesbians? Yeah. Right. So that would mean that we'd need four cubicles now, wouldn't yeah, we? Yeah, no, this is fine. Four cubicles. So, four, so every pub now- How many toilets do we need <laughs> Every pub has now got four toilets. Oh, Carl, bisexuals. <laughs> yeah. Now, interesting. Bisexuals. How many toilets do we need now? <laughs> Call you, the council. Do you use any? Huh? No. No, because no. they're interested in everything, aren't they? Because a little bisexual fellow will be looking at your knob. Right. With them, yeah. what you do, you just have a door, you open it, and there's one urinal there. So you can't get a queue. They have to, they have to sort of wait. I just thought, look, well, why can't there just be a, a thing between the urinals? So anyone, no one can look at anyone else's knob. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Just to go back to Ricky's point. What stops, even if we've got the toilet for gay men, what stops the gay men who want to have a look at your willy going in the regular toilet and pretending that yeah. they're straight? Most men don't, who is wear, police don't this? wear gay across their <laughs> no, head. No, exactly. They don't have a tattoo. There's no branding yet in the British <laughs> house where they have to declare. So we're going to have to expand this. What so we've all got to carry, carry identity. Do you, do you know cards. you can see a gay, can you? Coming a mile off. Can, no? No, I'll just hold it in next time. No, 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 no. Can you tell gay men? Do you know a gay man? I'd say, uh, probably, if you did like a, if you lined some people up yeah. and said, point them out, I reckon I'd get- But hold on, we're not talking about people dressed in leather with the arse cut out and an handlebar moustache. Yeah. We're talking about, uh, you know, the, 
everyday no, non well, course, oh, well, well, yeah. But I mean, uh, suppose I put you in a room and there was ten naked men, right? Yeah. And, uh, could you, there's five gay men and five heterosexual. Could you walk along that line looking at those gay- uh, uh, Am I naked? No, you don't have to be naked. Why would you have to be naked? To catch them out. <laughs> How would you catch them out? <laughs> no, don't, don't go into it, don't go into it. Don't go into it, play a record. The Thrills, One Horse Town on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Now, Carl Pilkington is getting ready. It's the start of a new strand in the show, a new quiz, a new competition to replace Rockbusters. Now that's quite a tall order, but yeah. what have you done? Right, like I said, right, if you've only just tuned in, what it is, I took, and I'll be taking, a well-known saying every week from the show, something that crops up a lot. Uh, first one that sprang to mind was... There's a little gay fella standing next to me in the urinal? That's next week. Okay. This week... There's this airy Chinese kid, right? Yeah. That's cropped up quite a lot. Sweeping the nation. Right. So what I've done, I've got five songs. Yeah. And I've edited them together to make that saying. You've got words you've, f from songs where any part of that sentence occurs yeah. to recreate it. Yeah. Now, what do they need to do? Do they need to say what the song is? Just the five songs? I mean, I, I was going to say song and artist, but if you want, just a song. So five, there's five things there, and if someone doesn't get all five, it's still worth emailing in because we might give it to the one who's got the most and then, yeah. uh, Can I suggest, uh, we go for artist rather than song, only because sometimes it's quite tricky to get a song title, sometimes it's more, it's very odd or it's not quite what you think it is, so maybe artist is a, is an easier one. You, are you happy with that, Carl? It's your composition. Right? I mean, Steve always does this whenever I come up with an idea. Oh, yeah. I'm just trying to make sure it's just the best it can yeah, be, Carl. Yeah. Yeah, no, he came up with a few game shows and Steve was going, no, it's no good. And Carl said to me, he said, it's the one of the office ever got on telly. Yeah, but, well, we shall see how cheap his chimps plays out, but um. frankly, the fact <laughs> that, the fact that you said to me, Steve, I've come up with the best game show ever, it's called Cheapest Chimps, what's the idea? I don't know, I just like the name. Like, it's something to do with chimps. I thought, well, I'm not sure that's the best, the best game show ever. And well, what was I the other one you came up I with? I think a few about? people will be disagreeing with him, Carl. I think people will say that Cheapest Chimps could be the best game show ever. You know, when I was in school, people like you, I really didn't like. You're a stirrer, Gervais. He flits, doesn't he, from one side to the next, Carl. The one thing, we may argue, mate, but at least we're consistent. Ricky Gervais flipping from one side to the other. One day he's Carl, on Carl's side. when was the last time Steve wrestled you to the ground and got you in a leg clamp? No, you're right. Never. What, is, is that supposed to be a good thing? Well, did you see us? Yeah, I saw you struggling in the, in Carl's office earlier. He was punching my legs to release me. We were on the floor and I was squeezing him with my mighty legs, wasn't I, Carl? No. It was like, I imagine that's what a crab feels like when an octopus has got it. <laughs> we were playing that, weren't we? So anyway... <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll play you this clip now. It's ten seconds long. We'll play it a couple of times because you'll need to take it in. Mm -hmm. Uh... So here it is then, uh, what are we saying? We're saying artists? Let's go with artists. Artists. So email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk, name the fa five artists it has taken to make up the saying, Give there's that email address Chinese again. kid. Give that email address again. ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. There's this right. airy Chinese kid. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> play it again. Yeah, play it again. There we go. <laughs> I think you better play it once more. Uh, I've got I've got them. Have got you got them? them all? Yeah. That's nice work. There we go. I just go. remind you now that the prizes include a uh, Red Dwarf DVD, Marion and Jeff, the first series of that on VHS, uh, a Live Forever Britpop CD, and also the very best of Led, Ze Led Zeppelin. Let's play one of those actually while we're here. Brilliant. Rock and roll.
one of the prizes on Coral's competition this week is the very best Led Zeppelin, that's obviously rock and roll. Uh, we've also got uh, Live Forever, Britpop CD, Marion and Jeff, and Red Dwarf. And, uh, should we play it again? So people have got another hairy Chinese kid. Who yeah. are the artists? Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's tricky, it's not very <laughs> easy. What's more? Uh, one more. Well, wow, there you go. Ricky Dodgervelli's at xfm.co.uk, those prizes can be yours. Yeah. I, uh, at the quiz, also discovered, of course, and, um, I don't know, I'm just intrigued to know, Carl, I'm, I'm just intrigued to know. Um, it was your girlfriend's birthday, wasn't it? Earlier in the week? Yeah, or last on, week? On Monday, yeah. And, um, yeah. I mean, obviously it was a triumph with the stuff you got for Christmas. Um, the condoms. The box, the box of condoms. Box so set, box set of condoms. <laughs> oh, yeah. Not uh, just, not just the singles, the <laughs> exactly. whole, the whole set. Yeah, a complete collection. Brilliant. So what'd you go for this what'd time? What'd you get her? Yeah, but... No, 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 yeah, no, but no, 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 yeah, but it's her birthday. How long have you been together? About nine years. Okay, so, ooh, God, it must cost you so much. No, but it starts getting tricky, doesn't it? Because I spoiled her a lot <laughs> in the first few years. <laughs> yeah. So then you Here's start... a packet of rubber bands. Enjoy yeah. them. Oh. Well, she, it's what she wanted. Okay. I mean, you're making out as if. No, no everyone wants paper clips. <laughs> Come on, what did you get her? Got her a, a new pair of gloves. Right. All right, well. And? What, nice, nice leather ones from Selfridges or Harrods or something? Uh, they were good ones, of the sort she likes, so... They weren't... Well, they, they, they weren't the little woollen ones that she had. Yeah. I thought that was a joke when she said he got me these, cos I laughed. No, that's, but I know that's, the, the ones she did have, the... When they said it's his birthday, right, it was her birthday Monday, and me and Steve were wanted to get her, and she went, he got me these, cos she had those little woollen gloves on, I laughed. Cos I thought she was joking, Carl. <laughs> That's what she wanted. Right. I've told you before about buying presents. It's, it's Does those gloves have your name sewn in them? <laughs> and a piece of string <laughs> that <laughs> ran over the back of your <laughs> duffel coat? You know, I've never been into getting presents and that. I had the problem at that Christmas one, that time with the Victoria Plum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'd right. hate that. We'd hate to bring that back. We've done that. Because <laughs> you talked about the book, because it's kind of to do with your dad, isn't it? He's he's a very bad gift buyer, was that the problem? Well, yeah, my dad's, I mean, my dad just wouldn't bother. It, it was my mum who sort of made an effort, and she sort of worked out half of what I wanted, then she left it to my dad to get it off someone, see if he could get one cheap or whatever. Uh, what I, is, I love the fact that usually people talk about, like, drinking heavily, yeah. or, um, uh, violent abuse, right? Yeah. But here's what he's been left with and scarred with from, from parents, is bad gift buying. Yeah, and that's the Victoria so Plum incident. In the greatest scheme of things in the world, yeah, that's not a bad thing to have, is it? <laughs> Right, there was this, there was this, this is what it's like about getting presents and stuff, right? Mm. With me, with my mum and dad. Go on. My mate, Colin, right? He Colin had a, No, Colin Bailey. Oh, right? yeah. He had a, uh, little, uh, Sinclair Spectrum, right? Yeah. Computer. Yeah. Which was like the, the, the thing to oh, have at that yeah, time, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. You saw he'd go round to his house. The it's deal was- Not the one you had to play through the window, cos you weren't allowed no, to- No, no, that's another lad, oh, right? Oh, yeah. This is, this is a different lad, and the deal was, he came to our house, and my mum gave him a pie. <laughs> And then I'd go round to his, and I'd stay there for a few hours playing, you know, Hungry Oris and stuff like that on it. <laughs> sure. right? Now, my mum and dad knew that I really wanted one of these computers, right? So I waited about a year, came round to Christmas Day, I thought, I reckon, uh, might have one. Turned out, they bought me the wrong one, they bought me a ZX81 instead <laughs> of a Spectrum, right? And, Christmas Day, I'm there trying to load the games up, it's not working, I'm thinking, what's wrong, right? And the thing with me, when I was a kid, I used to get quite sort of agitated. This, quite is, the, this is the moment. Right? I found out that it needed a RAM pack to make it work, right? Looking in the thing and it's saying, and, and make sure you put your RAM pack in the back. And I was like, oh, where's the RAM pack? And my dad's going, I don't know, I've got you the main bit, that's, that's it. So, I was that wound up. I just was sick, right? <laughs> <laughs> just sick. I, I didn't feel sick or anything, I just was like, oh god. Went to the sink, just, just sick. Cos I was that on edge about it. I said, come on, we've got to get one. And my dad's like, Tandy's shut, we're not gonna, we're not gonna get anything today. Ruined again, Christmas day. 
That was after the year <laughs> when my train set got blown up by our kid. <laughs> the following year, no ram pack. And now you ask me why don't I get good presents. <laughs> He's scarred. <laughs> He just, just I'm gonna die. Up. Honestly, I'm gonna die. The <laughs> only, it's just clean sick. Yeah. <laughs> There's no ramp pack. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why was, did you get to the bottom of it? Why wasn't there a ramp pack? You have to buy them separate. Oh, okay. them okay. What do you mean I can't play Frogger? <laughs> <laughs> oh no. So, um, there, wasn't there another incident when you threw up? Spontaneously threw up? Oh. Through sheer anxiety? I, I do get it. It's, uh, it's not so much now, because I've, I've relaxed a bit, but as a kid I used to be quite on edge all the time with certain things. Do you think that's what happened to your the cat? The wind that kept being sick. That it didn't get the food it wanted. And it just threw up. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. God, so they shaved it. <laughs> yeah, but again, you see, the cat thing... I mean, it's mad. I was thinking about it the other day, right? I, I used to think I had quite a normal upbringing. <laughs> you didn't. Right? And someone was talking your about Your mother once told you not to go to school because it was windy, Carl. It yeah, was not right? a normal upbringing. The cat was being sick, so she shaved it, so it was easier <laughs> to clean. Right, well, my mum and dad went on holiday, right? And I <laughs> stayed at the Rosses down the road. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Only a kid. Must have been about five or something, right? And, uh, I was... Always running around in the house, I had a lot of energy as a kid. What the Rosses did, they had this cat that was dead violent, the most violent sort of angry cat I have ever <laughs> witnessed. <laughs> a tiger. It was, it, honestly Steve, if it was bigger it would have been, because it was just always having a go at you. Yeah. If you went to pat it on the head, it went to bite you and stuff. And what they used to do with it, to stop me running around, I'd sort of be running around, and then I'd get a bit tired, and they'd say, have a lie down, and say. So I'd, I'd lie down on the settee and I'd nod off, and what they used to do, I'd wake up and they'd I'd put the cat on my belly. <laughs> right? So I'd be scared to move because it's like it's gonna get me. But it would keep you there. It, it kept me there and it used to sort of slaver on me and they'd sort of, you know, go out or whatever and I'd be lying there. That's not normal, is it? Carl, sorry, were you created by the Brothers Grimm <laughs> for one of their fairy tales? What kind of life is that? Um, <laughs> a, a cat paperweight to keep yeah, Carl yeah. in place. He keeps blowing around. It's windy. <laughs> we'll have to weigh him down. Be careful. Your mum probably told him that it's a windy day. You've got to get something heavy on him. Otherwise he just gets blown into the road. God. Bless him. Carl, let's just hear your, uh, your thing once more. Give people a final chance. Alright, here we go. <laughs> Ricky Gervais at xfm.co.uk. Can't stop the spirits when they need you. This life is more than just a read through. Ooh, those chili peppers are quite hot. Can't stop XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkerton. All right. Carl, you know what? You know what the time is. Bong. <laughs> Monkey news. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, right. Imagine if Trevor McDonald started like this. Yeah. There's there's been a lot of stuff going on on that with monkeys. Oh yeah. I've also I was mentioning earlier how we sort of making the grocer the, the, gro the feature grow a bit, uh -huh. right? So I'm thinking. Oh, I haven't told you, Steve, either. I've actually been asked to write a thing about monkeys. A poem? A no, what? no, for a magazine called, uh, Something Apes. Right. They want me to do, they want me to do, uh, like a column, 500 words. About, about apes. About monkeys? Anything I want on monkeys. Anything. What are you gonna write? Don't know, if, you know, think about it. Well, Should give him a typewriter, I can't with Shakespeare, <laughs> eventually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you could anyway, write about yeah. that, why didn't you write about that? You don't, the fact that you don't believe it. You don't believe that an infinite number of monkeys because, could type because he was Shakespeare? Because you reckon most of them hadn't read Shakespeare, so they wouldn't know the, some of the spellings. <laughs> exactly. It wouldn't happen. You idiot. Get on with it. All right. right. The, uh, there's been a few things, but one that springs to mind is, uh, they found a load of monkeys somewhere. <laughs> right. okay. This is brilliant. <laughs> yep. I mean, imagine this if this was news. <laughs> yeah. Go on. Uh... Where? Somewhere. I think it was in, uh... 17th century? Uh, I don't, it doesn't matter that bit. Right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Found a load of monkeys yeah. that are, uh, having a good chat. <laughs> Go on. They're having a good chat, alright. We've found mean? monkeys that can talk. Yeah. Um, about, f they've worked out, they've got about 534 different words that they're using. 
to, like, have a chat about stuff. More than you. <laughs> yeah, what do they chat about, then? Just, you know, things that monkeys are worrying about. Just, <laughs> you know, where do you get that from? Uh, <laughs> you know. Who does your hair? <laughs> you going out with her again, are you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. Have you seen that, uh... Sorry, you can't just leave that. No, 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 I'm just intrigued. I'm just intrigued to know what else. Is there any... No, were I they, mean, that, that Were they discussing the humanity? Did you see that programme on Channel 5? Yeah. He can walk up right. Yeah. But on a, what, Did you see they, how well Do you mean they taught them, they taught, they taught themselves this language? Yeah. Where? Where is this? In the wild is this, is it? Um... Not sign language, it's but... It's in, in some jungle somewhere. They found these monkeys. He heard some, you know, some explorer was over there cutting through the, the woods and that. And he heard his name, heard and he thought, that's what he went, what do you want, Riley? It wasn't me, I didn't say. Yeah. I, I didn't say, I always snide grass, where'd you get that gun? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I, well, it was only me and you here. Yeah. It's <laughs> weird, isn't it? No, it's not weird, it's not true. Well, right, come on then, what's next? Again, but what I'm thinking, well, I mean, that did happen. So, well. Um, yeah. and to sort of add to that feature. That, that's not true. We're doing, uh, Cheapest Chimps. Right. Can I just say now to the audience, if you thought that Rockbusters was bad, if you thought that that piece of rubbish earlier about the Chinese hairy kid was, was bad, I, I'm suspecting this is going to be really not very good at all. I don't, I'm not, I'm just pointing the finger. What I, do you think of it? What do you think of his negativity, Carl? He just keeps, he keeps doing it. I just don't think you should start with the name of the quiz first. This is my, this is my only concern. You, you, you come up with cheapest chimps. <laughs> and now you're trying to construct a game around that. So and I'm not sure it's a proper- well okay, let's- what is the game? Let's hear it. Right, it's about, uh, a chimp, right? Surprising. Uh, I spoke to an expert about him. Um, Who was the expert? Someone at London Zoo. Okay. Um, how many bananas do you think the little chimp that they've got at London Zoo eats a day? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> How many is bananas does a little this, chimp at London Zoo? Can they call in for this? No, I, I'd, I'd leave it. I'm just testing it out on Steve because we've already got an email thing going on here. So how many bananas do they eat a day? One chimp per day, how many bananas? Yeah. How many bananas does a chimp eat a day? And does this mean that, because sometimes I've seen them on the telly, they peel one, they'll just eat a bit of it and then they'll throw it away. We're talking a whole banana? But how many bananas does it eat a day? Um, <laughs> how many angry. bananas do you eat a day? <laughs> getting angry. Come on. Well, I'll, I'll try and have two if I've got time, but okay. I'm pretty busy. Well, I'll go <laughs> swinging on your tyre. <laughs> how, many, how many do you have? I think uh, a, a little monkey, a tiny little monkey, per day, um, <laughs> over the course of a day, I reckon he probably eats 15 bananas. Right. Ricky, what are you going for? Little chimp at yeah. London Zoo. But, hold on, the, but, but presumably they don't only feed it bananas. So okay. it's, so it's, so the question is... It's how many bananas does it eat? Come on, Yeah, Rick. but how many does it get given? It would eat 15 if it was given 15, but it might be given a, one slice of banana, 15 oranges, 200 potatoes and some lettuce. How many bananas does it eat? Come on. It's Five. Just, have a guess. Five? Yeah. Right. It's only one. Yeah, because it only gets given one. Cheap as chimps. <laughs> what? So what? it's pretty cheap to have a chimp. Right. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm on your side now, Steve. I don't understand what happened then. Wait, so, at the end of it, you always shout, cheap as chimps. <laughs> <laughs> is that, what, what, that's the quiz, is it? Oh, play a record, Wait, Carl. so is that it? Is that seriously is it? Is that it? Was that, that, was that the first instalment of cheap as chimps? Yeah. We'll have to see what the press say about this. And, and, um, and why does it only eat one banana? Because it only gets given one banana. I think that's all it wants. No. So you don't even know, you didn't even bother no, to ask it would, him. it wouldn't just get given one banana or nothing else, it would get given banana and then lots of other stuff like apples, oranges, carrots. It would get given a balanced diet. Cigars. <laughs> Any successful answers on your quiz, Carl? We've had people who've That's got what you get a maximum you put of four. a duck in a microwave. Yeah, yeah. Bill with us. Nice. Alright. Cheers. Um, and, uh, so I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about, um, cheapest chimps, that that's safe. That's, that's gonna that's, run and that's, run. Yeah, that, I can, that is gonna run and that's run. That's really got legs. Uh, we're, I'm gonna check the press Monday. I can only assume it's a triumph. <laughs> exactly, another Pilkington triumph. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna give the prize, if you don't mind, Carl, to Karen and Jeff Gillian, because they're the only one that got, they were the only couple that got, uh, the second answer, which was very, very good. But tricky. they got four, did they? But they only got four right. four is the top answer, so should we give so the answer? now? So play it, Carl, and then tell us who each one is. Alright. <laughs> So 
So there you go. I didn't know the second one. There's but the yeah. Sony Chinese kid. So the first one, the last. The last. Yeah. There she goes. Right. That's George Harrison. No. That's Philip Bailey. And that's Deacon Blue. Right, so it was, it was the Lars. Yeah, what's the second one? Strokes. Oof, that was very tricky. That is hard. George Harrison Harrison's for Aerie, that's all I could get. It was Ari. Uh, Ari Christian, yeah. yeah. Uh, no. Uh, Chinese, Phil Bailey. Chinese yeah. War is. Yeah. And Deacon Blue, Real Gone Kid. Real Gone Kid, yeah. There's this Airy Chinese kid. Very, yeah. very hard. I love the fact that the normal bit of that, like, the normal bit is like the well-known phrase, there's this Airy <laughs> Chinese yeah, kid. Yeah, exactly. Like, Nothing happened there. That's normal. There's this hairy <laughs> Chinese kid. As a phrase that often- In fact, you're right, we must have said that phrase twenty times today. <laughs> what- when was the last time that was said twenty times? Never. I don't think it's ever been said anywhere. There's this hairy Chinese kid. I don't- I mean- Even in China? I don't think it's ever- well, it's very rare. Definitely not said in China. <laughs> <laughs> the prizes they've won? The prizes they won, Red Dwarf DVD, Live Forever, The Best of Britpop, Marion and Jeff on VHS and The Best of Led Zeppelin, well done to Karen and Jeff Gillian. I've also seen no proof of this hairy Chinese kid. None whatsoever. <laughs> Alpine Stars, Burning Up on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Steve, you're out of the room there. Mm -hmm. Carl took a phone call from someone. Okay. He's found a cellmate. Right. Not a soul mate, I think one day they will be cellmates. Yes. Because he's just like, he loves everything Carl loves, and he was telling Carl stuff, and Carl's face was lighting up. Yeah. He's told him of two Russian kids in the circus, they're covered in air, and their mum tells them off because they're covered in fleas. <laughs> Carl said, see, that annoys me again, isn't it? They just, they do something else. And the bloke went, yeah, they should just make money out of being hairy. <laughs> and Carl went, exactly. <laughs> and, the, and he said, have you heard of the, the three-legged juggler? And the bloke went, no, what's that? He went, that annoys me as well. Because he thinks they shouldn't have done juggling, they should have done football. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, though, Steve? There what do you mean a three-legged juggler? What are you talking he's about? He's a famous three-legged juggler. Oh, he's mega famous! <laughs> he's like the Beckham of wherever he's from. But the other day I was looking in, I don't know, a bizarre magazine or something, right? And there was this fella who, uh, he had no arms. Uh, so you saw a picture of him, his job was fixing watches, did it with his feet. <laughs> Go on. Well, it's just why pick the most hardest job to do when you haven't got any hands? Crush, <laughs> crush grapes. <laughs> or. Do you know what I mean? Uh, that, that annoys me. Oh, crush grapes! Imagine him being told that and that he comes <laughs> into the, uh, the careers advisory where I go, now, uh, what do you want to do, Hargreaves? Uh, make watches? Right, take a look at your arms. Crush grapes, mate. <laughs> Sorry, you're a grape crusher. Next. Brilliant. Brilliant. I would love you to be a career advisory in some sort of clinic. It would be brilliant. I like the fact that it annoys you. Here's a man, he's got no arms, he has learned to fix watches with his feet. Yeah. An incredible talent, incredible skill, he's utilising that brilliantly. That's annoying to you, you are angered by it. I, I'm only being honest. Now you be honest, right? Your watch is broke, who would you go to? You're in a rush, you need it fixing in a rush. <laughs> now, you need some fresh wine. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, you're well, amazing. What's this thing that you've been talking about? This video? Freaks. Right. It was a thing that was banned for like 50 years. Uh, I think it's been taken off again, but I don't know why if it's just been deleted. Right. I, I, it's a quest. If anyone out there has got a copy of Freaks on DVD or VHS, can Carl borrow it, please? I just, I, I mean, I almost want to set up a camera to see him watching it. Um, it's absolutely real. They use people in the circus of the time. I think it's the twenties or thirties of the depression. And there's there's people. There's cone heads. There's a bearded lady. All genuine. There's a bloke they call the human slug who's got no arms and no legs, Carl, and he's just there, and he rolls a cigarette and lights it with his mouth. I think I've seen his brother, <laughs> who isn't called the human slug. Is called the pillow. <laughs> <laughs> right? How does he make a living? He, um. <laughs> does anyone want to meet Carl for money? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like that? The I annoying thing was, right, there was a picture of him, I was going to put it on I our... think 
<laughs> I've seen his brother. I've, uh, on our website, we've, we put things up like this, right? If you go to ricky.gervais at x7.co.uk forward slash- What? You've put things like that on my website? It's nothing to do with me. I want people to know that that website is not kept or looked at by me. So, I don't, what have you put on there? There's a fella on there who's known as the Pillow, <laughs> and he's God. um. You see, I, I get a bit worried with things like this because we're not sort of having a, having a go or anything. It's just things that fascinate, fascinate you. Me. Yeah, and um, yeah, it's a guy. It might it might be the same sort of thing. What's your one? I called? bet you used to stare at people with goiters, didn't you, when you were little in Tesco's? Well. Just go go to xfm.co.uk forward slash Ricky. It is. What's the worst thing you've ever seen on like a human face? You know, you know what it is, and what I don't want to talk about it. I can't remember. No. Have you told me? Yeah. What is it? But go. It's not go the to, elephant lady. Go to the. Yeah. Is it the elephant lady? You talked about that. I know. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it again. Go to the website and see the human pillow. <laughs> <laughs> Why is I, he a human pillow? That's what annoyed me. I thought he was more of a draft excluder. <laughs> 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 oh, that makes all kinds of rules. <laughs> Buzz Cox, Harmony in the Head. Now, things are flying here at XFM. We, we, people have called in. There is a video of Freaks on the way. Carl's gonna see that within the week. That's exciting. That is exciting for me, do you know what I mean? <laughs> about our education of Carl. We started off trying to teach him about science and history and now we just find out he likes pictures of airy Chinese kids and Who women. Doesn't? Who doesn't? No, true. You've got a theory about pictures of freaks, haven't you? Uh, it, you, see, you see, you always bring things up that I don't want to talk about because I'm, I'm really worried that people, if you've just tuned in for the first time, it's the first time you hear it and we're talking about airy Chinese kids, Yeah. talking about the human... Word. Carl, Carl, listen. People don't think that you're taking the piss out of those people. They lump you in with them. They, yeah. Do you know what I mean? They they think that you're a freak of nature, so you can say anything you want. Do you know what I mean? Because it's honest. It's from the heart. It's genuine. So don't worry about yeah, that. Yeah, but Suzanne was saying last night that I, I've just I've got a heart of stone or whatever it is. Why? Because because I wasn't crying at comic relief. And all I, all I always used to say to her. Get out, Elephant Man. Let me watch that for thirty minutes. I'll be crying my heart out. Why? Why do you care about that, but not? Because it's that. that. That is more real, isn't it? Right. Think of John Merrick. Sorry, sorry. What the film starring John Hurt is more real than footage of starving people in Africa? No, but what I'm saying is, think about. See, this is why I didn't want to bring it up because people are gonna <laughs> just say. Well, you're allowed to cry at what you like. You can't, people can't have you for not yeah, crying imagine, at someone and crying imagine, at someone else. Imagine that, like, if you've seen the film, you know, his head's all, you know, messed up and that. Yeah. He's getting picked on all the time. Yeah. It's By Michael Elphick, I remember. Yeah. yeah. It's just really, really sad. Whereas, you know, we try to help But you give him a bone people. and he forgets it. Do you know what I mean, though? He never forgets, really. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Anyway. Oh god. We're giving away stuff again. Yeah. Um, time tell me a theory about p p p freaks who have their picture taken. No, I'd, I'd leave it. Leave no, it. can I tell we'll you? We'll do it next week. Can then. I tell you what this Go is? Go on quickly. What is it? Right. When he sees a little picture, like in his books, he's got. He carries round those oh, yeah, yeah, things, yeah. right? And there's like a, a fella with a little head with some like uh, uh, able-bodied people. He goes, the only reason. He must know the only reason they got to take that picture, right, was so they could show their mates, say, look at me, the little <laughs> fellow with a little head. <laughs> that's what, that's his theory. Yeah. So every picture of a, of a, of a freak, they're right, being- Steve, let me <laughs> describe the picture to you. This, this little fellow with a little head. Right. Playing on the piano. <laughs> I've seen it. <laughs> all his family stood around and mates and that. When have you ever seen a picture of someone playing the piano and everybody wants to be in on it? <laughs> Doesn't happen. Maybe it was one of those kind of Christmas <laughs> cards they it sent out to everyone. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't. You could see one of them was like in a rush to go away, he was probably uh, planned to go out and he was like, but they were taking a picture, it's oh I'll be in it then before I go out and it was all, he's out of order. Yeah. If you say, if, do you know the one I, I mean? do know the one you mean, yeah. You go, what about the one in the, uh, when you went down to Cornwall? In that little we'll pub. We'll talk about that next week. What, 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 you want to get on, do you? Yeah, right. We've got our giveaway, uh, another prize. Yes, um, you lucky, lucky people. For those of you that haven't seen it, 
and do not have the requisite £4.99 to buy it yourselves, <laughs> you can win on VHS cassette, panned and scanned. <laughs> Billy Elliot, the special edition, includes bonus oh. documentary, The Billy Elliot Boy. Oh, and, um, I'd like to see how they really sort of got, made that film. Exactly. Well, it's the, it's the, it's the hit film, Billy Elliot, and you can win that on VHS. Um, because, Carl, I assume you have included yourself in an excerpt from the movie. Taken a scene from the film. Uh -huh. Who do you play? Billy? I'm playing the part of Billy. Brilliant. And, uh, we'll have a question at the end of Come it. Come on. Yeah. Brilliant. Two, three part of all and go. Just been, uh, just been down the valley. So you're the half where you. What are you looking like that for? What's wrong with Bally? What's wrong with Bally? Yeah, well, what's wrong with it? It keeps you fit and that. What do you think, Aunt Inora? Think about me doing Bally. I used to go to Bally. There you go. She used to go out to Bally. I used to say I could have been a professional dancer if I'd had the training. Bet you were pretty good, weren't you? Wasn't the time you, uh, wasn't the time you had wind for five minutes, was it? But you well glided across well, the Well, you shut up! Well, what's wrong with Bally, anyway? For girls. No, no, not for lads, Bally. Lads do football, or... Well, I've done that, yeah. Boxing, or... Did that for a couple of weeks, so... Wrestling. Wrestling? Yeah, wrestling, yeah. Oh, Brilliant. Bally. Well, don't worry about it anyway. Just... Is it all right if my mate Wayne stays over tonight? He just wants to sleep over. He's just coming over to Wayne sleep? Yeah, he just stays over. I'm not gay or anything, he's just... I don't fancy him, I'm not... Yes, you do. I don't. Yes, you bloody well do. What, just, just because I want my mate Wayne to sleep over and I've started doing ballet, that, that turns me into a gay man, does it? You haven't seen my Village People album lying around. You're asking for a hating Just that. joking, just having a, just having a laugh. Just didn't mean... <sighs> Fuck nothing here, I'm going out. Look, from now on you stay here, you look after your nana. Got that? Well, there is. What's the question? Powerful. Uh, I'd like to know what was the name of the actor that Carl was taking the role of. Does that make sense? That's not yeah. grammatically quite right, but anyway, well, yeah. Fine. Who was the uh, Who was the young lad that uh, Carl was taking the place of there? Uh, name the actor, not the character. And just email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. You can win yourself. You can be fast. You can win yourself a VHS edition of Billy Elliot worth £4.99. I'm going to leave the uh, sticker on, which has actually got the price on. Brilliant. I'm going to leave that on so you know just what you've got in your head. Food Fighters. No, it's not. It's feeder. 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 Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing now. Why have we got to stop? Sorry, we just had an argument then. Why have we got to stop at 5-2? It's just, uh, the, f the football's on, isn't it? So... So yeah. we, wh what can we do? We can do a link here, and then we can play- We can we'll talk play here, we'll play a song, do a little What about chat. the competition? We've got to announce the competition. Well, Steve- Well, I know. can tell you right now that, um, there's only two people, it would appear, that are interested in a VHS copy of Billy Elliot. Um, that's how mediocre that gift and that prize is, Carl. I don't know if you want to learn from that. Yeah. But I'm going to give this one to, uh, MJ McKay, who has correctly identified that you were taking the part of Jamie Bell that's in it. Billy Elliot. So, uh, well done. Right, just fold me that and I'll, uh, sort that out. We'll get the video. What film are you doing next week? Dunno, I've got, uh, been out and bought a couple. Got, uh, got Silence of the Lambs I can do something with. Right. Uh, bought Fight Club, but it's a bit difficult. Uh, you know, always, always open to suggestions and that, so, you got any favourite films? What about the 1930s film Freaks? Oh. oh. I can't wait, I cannot wait for That'd your... That'd be brilliant, that'd be good. I'm excited about Why that. Why don't you do a film review of that next week as well? Yeah, well it depends, if the fella, you know, if, if anyone's got it, just send it in, I'll send it you back once I've watched it. So that'd be good. Uh, next week we'll do, uh... Oh, please, please, please tell me there's gonna be more Cheapest Chimps. Yep. Yeah. 
Oh, <laughs> thank goodness. We'll see what the press say. We'll see what the press say about that. Looking we'll forward to that. Out. Do you know, like, you're always having a go at my ideas. Yeah. Little, yeah. you know, cheapest chimps you've put down. Mm -hmm. Uh, again, I, I normally come up with these because you don't come up with a competition sure, idea. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, he's done yeah. him again. Yeah. Well, cheapest chimps, mine, you're dissing it. Yep. Rockbuster's one of the most successful competitions ever. Uh-huh. Uh, and he means in the world, not just yeah. on XFM. Yeah. You put that down. Yep. Right? Uh, what are you thinking about this, right? I was watching Comic Relief okay. last night. Came up with an idea. Mm -hmm. Right? You get Jono. Okay. Jono right? Coleman, yeah. Uh, say, Vanessa Feltz. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, maybe, you know, Dawn French, because cause she'd be around for that. And then get them all in a room for comic relief. And what you do, put a cake in front of them. Yeah. Right? And, and like, you, you don't feed them. And like they're going, oh, I'd love a bit of that cake, <laughs> right? It's called Famine Academy, <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> Whilst they lose pounds, they get pounds. <laughs> right. What do you think? Play a record, Carl. Well, I love it. Again, Carl. again. I love do you it, know what Carl. I mean? Yeah, again. I love it.